www.vronline.com forward slash chat or call into the show at 518-712-3070. Now, here are your hosts, Brian Clark and Matt Boone. Here we are. What's going on, guys? It is Tuesday, May 22nd, 2012. We got a lot to talk about, man. We got a lot to talk about. Um, Monday Night Raw from last night, we had uh, Over the Limit on Sunday night, the WWE pay-per-view. We uh, also had breaking news um, this past week. It's just been a crazy week with um, you know Monday Night Raw going to three hours. We had uh, TNA Impact going live. We had Ric Flair apparently quit TNA. Alex Shelley as well. Really? Yeah. Um. It's it's been crazy. Yeah, I've been out of hat. You know me. I'm I'm on vacation right now. I'm in Clearwater, right? Are you? Are is down that here. is that where you are? Yeah, I'm down here near Tampa. So I'm doing the show for myself. I'm sorry if the quality's bad, but yeah, like so I've missed all the big news. But I've heard there's been like releases and cuts and yeah, Raw three hours, Impact live. I've heard there's like some. Big stuff going on right now. Yeah. Um. Well, and and not only China had a meltdown over the weekend uh, or, or last week. I heard week. about that too. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, it was like three different incidents with uh, with her and um. You know, uh, WWE pay per view. A bad dose of a, a bad dose of Nyquil, right? Yeah, or cough medicine, I think, is uh, is what she yeah. referred to. I mean, give me a break, dude. You know what I mean? And then, I mean, that was her first excuse. And then, you know, a couple incidents happened after that. And, um, I mean, she's a mess, dude. She, she's just, she's a train wreck right now. Um, and it's just been a crazy week, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. You're, you're on the caddy? I thought you were coming back um, to Jacksonville, right? I thought you were on the road. No, I told you we were going to uh, Clearwater uh, Monday night, and I even I warned you ahead of time. I said I'm gonna, I said just giving you a heads up, I'm gonna have to do the show on the cell this week. I, I had, I thought, and I thought I'm gonna, you, be, I'm gonna be going for like, well, like two weeks. I thought you were on your way back. I thought you were on a freeway right now, headed back to Jacksonville. No, we were at, uh, we were out at Arby's and then driving back here. And actually. I'm not at my sister's house where I'm visiting right now. I'm over at another friend's house. They let me use a bedroom, so I'm by. Because otherwise, I would have had like a whole crowd of people. It would have been noisy and distracting. Right. I said no, I can't do that. They gave me a special room. I was sitting here on a recliner in a room by myself, and uh, yeah. You said you uh, you went to Arby's, huh? Yeah, I got some. I can't eat it. That's right next to me. I got some mozzarella sticks and some roast beef sandwich. Now listen, I got two stories for you about, about Arby's. Number one, you used to work there, and that's I, not that's not a problem. I used, to work there. I used to work at McDonald's back in my high school days. You know what I mean? So, well, of course, yeah, uh, too. When I worked there. I was 15, so yeah, there's no embarrassment. And then the other story I read about Arby's was about two days ago, where I guess a seven-year-old kid uh, took a bite into a sandwich, and uh, there was a finger, a finger in the uh, in the sandwich. Oh, that's what I want to hear right before I ch uh, chew down on these roast beef sandwiches here in a minute. Is uh, there could be a finger in there? Well, there right. may be a finger in there. I, it may have happened in Florida too. I, I don't know, man. But he bit into it, and it was a fucking somebody's finger. Somebody's finger was cut off, and voila, there you go. <laughs> well, well, hot dogs. They also tried to give me a laptop to get in the chat room, but uh, I can't. I can't get the chat to work for some reason. So I'm gonna be chatless this week, guys. So I say. Ah, what are you going to do? Nobody wants you in the chat room anyways. No, I'm playing. I'm <laughs> Everybody playing. wants me in there. You know, damn well you're wrong. So, uh, so what's been going on, dude? You're on, uh, you're on vacation. Well, must, must be nice to have a, uh, a vacation, you know? Oh, man, I haven't left, uh, I live in Orange Park, Florida, as you know, right outside of Jacksonville. I haven't left Orange Park, and I think I figured it to be, since Vegas was the last time I really left Orange Park for, like, more than a day. I, I'll tell you what, dude, Clearwater Beach, uh, I've been there before. You have to, uh, actually, you have to drive over a, a long bridge to get out to uh, to Clearwater. You know, you pass Tampa, and then you get to yep. Clearwater. It is one of the most beautiful places. We were just over that bridge right now on the way to do the show, actually. It, no dude, it, it's one of the longest bridges ever, and there's water on, on both sides of you, dude. And it's not a it's not a high bridge. You're you're right there, right, right up against the water. You know what I mean? It's a long bridge, yeah. Yeah, it's really long, man. It takes you about 20, 20 to 30 minutes just to, uh, you know, drive over that into... Uh, the, ride, 
the ride wasn't as bad as it was a four hour ride. So I mean it's never fun, but it was it went by quick. Like it was not a hellacious ride or anything. You know I mean I hate traveling. But it wasn't right. bad. It wasn't bad at all. Yeah, one of the most beautiful places in the entire United States, bro. Clearwater Beach. I'm telling you, man, it's it's amazing. That I heard the beach thing. Yeah, I heard the beach is nice. I haven't been there yet. Well, the beach is one of those beaches where you can see through the water, you know what I mean? It's that light blue yeah, where you clear can water. Yeah. Clear water, there you go. That's why you're there, you know what I mean? But one of that and uh Boca you know, uh, Boca Boca Raton, which uh, Vince McMahon has a uh, a condo down there, but uh, Boca Raton is an awesome. One of my, one of my bosses uh, lives in Boca. I know. Uh, Sha- you know we won't talk about him. No, no, no. Uh, Shalik lives down there. I know that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mister 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 Mike Shalik lives there. But also, you know, down here, I, I made a joke because uh, we were driving by a sign that said Zephyr Hills, like 12 miles away. I was like, yeah, it's just like the water. He said, that's where the water's made. It's the Zephyr Hills Pool, I guess. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm retarded. I, I made a joke afterwards. I was like, oh, yeah, do they make chocolate in Hershey, Pennsylvania? You know, we were talking about that on the show last week. So, right. You know. Yeah. Actually, you know what? They're, they thought st- it was they're still in Pennsylvania, man. They're in uh, Wilkes Bear tonight for the uh, WWE SmackDown tapings. Then they're coming up here tomorrow to uh, Poughkeepsie, but uh, I'm not going to go. Uh, it's only a, a house show, you know what I mean? Wow, you skipped a couple of them. You skipped a couple of events recently. What was the uh, show you missed? Not, not for the Florida House concert. There was another one recently uh, near your area, wasn't there? It was in uh, Glens Falls, man, last weekend. That's right. That's yeah, right. That's right. You did go to that. No, I didn't. I didn't go out there. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, okay. It's only house shows. If it was a televised event, we'd be doing a live radio show, show from it. You know what I mean? But whatever. Anyway, so how was the weekend, dude, besides uh, the vacation, right? Good weekend? Uh, yeah, great week. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Um, we got a bunch of stuff planned for this weekend, so when you ask me next week on the show what I do this weekend, I might have to uh, exclude some of the, uh, the uh, ongoing. You can get some pussy when you're down in Clearwater. <laughs> you got to take right, man. What are we talking about? Uh, uh, that's my door. Attaboy. At least he comes out and freely admits it this time, man. Look, before it was, uh, I'm going to throw a hissy. Well, really, the last time you asked me, I had a whole room full of girls that I did not need knowing <laughs> what I'm doing with other girls. You know, come on. You're blowing up my spot, man. It's supposed to be a bro code day. You, you almost fucked me up. Well, I hear you. I didn't know they were there. You know I didn't know that they and were And my there. God, don't get me started on your Facebook fucking, uh, did you bang this girl? Everybody click and find out. I'm like, you uh, got to be that's local girls that I gotta live with. Like I gotta live with in this life. You, you can't be blowing me up like that. That's not a pro. So you're gonna be there for so what's been going on this week, man? It's been a lot of news. Let's, let's talk I about know. stuff. I, I know. Honestly, I didn't see over the limit. I don't even know what happened. I didn't see raw. I don't even know what happened. I'm more in the dark. Even for me, I'm way in the dark this week. So you gotta let me know. I'll uh, I'll run it down for you, man. We're gonna get you. This is what we're gonna do, man. I'm gonna get some plugs out of the way right now. Then we'll get into uh, over the limit. We'll talk about that first in hour number one, and then we'll talk about raw. We'll get through both of those in hour one, and then in hour number two, we gotta bring up the breaking news over the past two. couple of weeks. Take live phone calls. Whatever you guys wanna do in uh, in hour number two. Three, three other quick things. A mm-hmm. t-shirt. Have you even sent mine in the mail yet? It's it's coming. It's coming. No, I haven't sent it. It is, it is coming. But soon. Um, I play. I put an order in. I sent the money. The money's already sent. The supplies have been ordered. The t-shirts. Another hundred t-shirts are going to be coming probably here in the next two weeks. I have fifty of them right now. Um, but everybody. Get more medium. If anybody wants an extra large, then I'll put the uh, I'll put a PO box out for you guys to send the money. But if you want anything besides an extra large, you're going to have to wait it out for about another two weeks because I have tons of extra larges. I just don't have enough mediums, uh, smalls, you know. And and not only that, but a lot of people want two XL or three XL. XL, and they're charging me more for XL sizes, man. So I'm gonna have what? to think. Yeah, I'm gonna. I guess it's because it's more material, you know. Well, and not only that, but if you go to like a Walmart and you get the white T-shirts, the extra large or the two XLs, they're always more expensive. And I guess that's what they're doing. Yeah, because it's more, it's more material. I guess it costs more to make the shirts than it would a, a smaller shirt. Right. So I, I mean, I don't mind taking a dollar or two loss. I'm not making anything off these T-shirts anyways. But I might have to charge, you know, somebody that wants a two XL. One guy asked for a five XL or a six XL, and I'm like, Jesus, man. Uh, what for? That's a, a big boy. And what for a bed sheet, dude? To to you know what I mean, dude. Wait, wait. <laughs> but anyways, um, so we'll, we'll work on that. There, I'll get yours out in the mail ASAP, dude. So we're working on that. Um, and then I don't think we're gonna have production issues. Vendetta, yep. Vendetta is uh, is nowhere to be found tonight. So I don't know what the deal is, man. I I put up the uh, the pre-show, and a lot of times when I play music, we get cut out. If that happens, I guarantee you we'll be back in a couple minutes. Just uh, keep trying to refresh. Hopefully we don't have any uh, you know any issues or anything like that. 
um, tonight. Yeah, knock on the wood. But uh, ask the chat if, because uh, I'm on the cell, I'm worried. Uh, can they hear me all right? Is the quality okay? What do we got going on? You sound a little bit off on my end, but I, I think they can hear you. I mean, they would have said something by now, right? Everybody in the chat room, you good? You guys can hear me. Yeah, you sound normal. They say you're fine. So we're, right, uh, cool. we're good to go. Uh, speaking of the chat room, you can get there at WZRonline.com. Good. Slash chat. Once again, wzronline.com slash chat. Get there. Lots and lots of people in there tonight. Let me rant for a second, Boone. Last night, my man, last night, uh -oh. everything was fine, man, until after Monday Night Raw. And then about 12.30, man, I had all my work done. I was getting ready to go to bed, calling an early night on a Monday. That never happens. And pro, re and pro wrestling scoops.com goes down. All right? Oh, I was God. up, brother, I was up until Five. Listen, you guys can go Didn't check. Did you during the pay per view too? Um, yeah, it was right after the pay per view. <laughs> you know, dude, I was uh, Listen, I put a Facebook status up at five something this morning, man. The birds were chirping, right? The birds were chirping. The, yeah. the sun was coming up. It was getting light outside. I put a Facebook status up. I said, "Hey, <laughs> the birds are chirping <laughs> and the sun is coming up, man." And here I am. You guys can check it, man. It was like five fifteen this morning. Anyways, I didn't get that back up until seven thirty. This morning, I went to bed at 8 o'clock. I took a two-hour nap. I was back up at 10, and we're here right now. You seem like you're in a good mood. Uh, no, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm just tired, man. You know what I mean? I get used to it. You know, it, it seems like it. Anyways, we, we switched the uh, the IP address to ProWrestlingScoops.com. So I'm getting a lot of emails today and people saying, you know, PWS isn't loading. I'm getting a default error. If that happens, all you got to do, guys, is clear your cache. You just go to the top navigation bar. You click the tools, you know, the tools button up there and uh, just put clear cache and everything will come back. Everything will work for you guys. And uh, it's just, we switched the IP. I mean, it'll probably do it on its own as your ISP, you know, your internet service provider, as it catches up, um, you know, it'll come back. But if you want it to load right now, just clear your cache and you'll be good to go. And uh, I'm tired, man. I'm tired, yeah. you know. You gotta hey, I'll do a little bragging too. Uh, I'm gonna do it with a uh, final bite of roast beef sandwich in my mouth. And okay. Radio, that's one of the things. Mm, watch out! Right. Watch out for that! Watch out for that finger! Watch! Watch the finger! All right, we're chewing now, but um, let's talk a little bit about my reliability here. Mm. Friday, I was asked to be a guest on the UK radio show. Okay. We didn't think I'd show up. Mm -hmm. I had to dial a UK number. I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And yet, I got on Skype to make sure because they didn't think I'd show up, and I was there. Mm. And now. Here we are. I'm in Clearwater. It's Tuesday. Time to do a radio show. I don't have a landline. I don't uh -huh. have the internet. But uh -huh. guess what? Uh -huh. I'm here. You're here? Why, uh -huh. was, why wasn't I invited to, to this UK show? I didn't think you want to come all the way from New York down here, but um. I'm not talking. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about the radio show. I wasn't. Uh, I was invited. What happened? Invited. Invited to oh, the to, to the, the UK. You were. I told you. I told you about it a while ago. Oh. All right. I don't yeah, know. so it was a British Bulldog tribute show. Yeah, I told you about it. Oh, so uh, so other than that, how was it? Did you have a good time? Are you here now? Are you going to be here next week? You're going to be there. Fun, yeah. I mean, it was hard to understand because they had the quality, the audio quality wasn't all that great. Plus, they had thick accents when, you, so you can barely hear them, and then when you can't hear them, you don't really understand what they're saying anyway. So it was it was mm -hmm. hard, but we got through it. It was pretty fun. It was good. All right, no doubt. Um, let's yeah. let's get yeah, into yeah. it. Uh, SmackDown spoilers is going to be posted on WZRonline.com here in the uh, in the next couple of minutes. I'm going to put up a post. Um, you can email us. You can email us at uh, at feedback at WZRonline.com. You can uh, also follow us on Facebook. Go to facebookcom slash army. The official website of WZR Radio is WZRonline.com. Just go to WZRonline.com. Top navigation bar. You can get the Twitter, the YouTube. The Facebook, all the social media tabs, the latest news, rumors, tons of photo galleries, hot women galleries from my boy Matt Boone. Takes care of me over there with the galleries. And uh, just go to WZRonline.com. Make it your homepage, motherfuckers. <laughs> no, Absolutely. Uh, also, yeah. what do we got? Some guests coming up on the show. And yes. the other point I wanted to make was John Jones. What's going on with him? My God. Yeah, he apologized today on Facebook and then and then took it down. But um, as far as guests, here we go. Uh, Bobby Fish. Some of you guys that follow Ring of Honor or Pro Wrestling Noah, you may know him. He's a great indie worker. He is from right here in Albany, New York. Local guy and uh, just fought for Cage Wars. Bobby Fish is going to be coming live on WZR Radio. You show some hometown love? 
Hometown love. We're going to get Bobby Fish. He's a good dude. We're going to have him on. And not only that, I had a conversation with former WWE star Shad Gaspard yesterday, uh, formerly of Crime Time and WWE. And he is going to be coming live on WZR Radio here in now the let next. Let me answer this. I'm going to put you on the spot live in front of your audience. Sure. We've already talked about it. So you don't get mad. We've already explained this. That uh, we, I, I personally do an MMA website because it was a yoga thing for both people. <clears throat> was offered Diamond Dallas Page for a radio interview and Trish Stratus. Yeah. And you passed. Uh, are we going to start doing interviews now? Because I can get some guests for us, and uh, um, I, would, I, I would love to interview as, people. I don't mind it at all. I'll be honest with you. As far as Trish Stratus is concerned, I've never, I've never been a big fan, dude. And I always think that she's got, she's way. I mean. Dude, ego, 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 man. Every yeah, time. The guys like Jackie, they like when Tiffany. Like, could you imagine if Trish Stratus was on? How how things just go? Yeah, down. no doubt. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It just seems like her ego is way over her head, man. You know what I mean? And 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 then yeah, D yeah, D D D D P would would be a lot of work, no doubt about it. Um, you know, we would have to go and get questions. As far as Shad Gaspard is concerned. Oh, no, I know. I I could do a lot of D D P stuff. I was actually well, a really big fan of his during the attitude there. Well, as far as as Shad is concerned, man. I I talked to him yesterday, and he just shoots it. He's like me and you, man. He shoots the shit, man. Uh, we don't have like to come. And big Vito. He's yeah, a yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. And he would come on here and just basically shoot the shit and talk about pro wrestling. And we don't need to come up with, you know, interview questions. And not only that, we can take. Uh, well, we can take live phone calls. You guys, um, if you want to talk to him, you guys will be able to call up live and uh, ask him questions, whatever you guys want to talk about, man. So we're going to have Shad on here in the next week or two, and I'll keep you guys posted on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Absolutely. But, yeah, that's the formula we should do. Have guests on. We'll plug, because they always come on the plug something. So we'll plug whatever they're plugging. If mm -hmm. we have one or two questions, we'll ask them, and then we'll just open the phone lines and let people ask questions to them. It's all you guys, you want man. Thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Wh whatever you guys want to talk about, man. And uh, we want to be the most interactive show. What What's more interactive than letting them talk to the guys themselves? Yeah. And and listen, man. Don't be afraid to call. Uh, he is the coolest guy, man. He, he he just doesn't give a fuck, man. He's he's mad cool. So we'll uh, we'll have him on, and uh, you guys will be able to ask uh, whatever. Yeah. Definitely be fun. All right. Here we go, dude. Let's get into it. Um, I got the plugs out of the way, right? WZROnline.com is the official website of WZR Radio. So make that your homepage, guys. Um, and then we'll do the rapid fire. I'll put that up in hour number two. Um, we had a pay-per-view that I know you didn't see on, uh, on Sunday night. Um, you know, and the feedback, bro, like the feedback online I is... I heard the title matches were good, but, uh, bro, the show good or, or what? You know, like, like all the, all the feedback online is, is how much the pay-per-view sucked. And he, you talked about it a couple weeks ago when they were doing the, uh, or a couple months ago, dude, when they did the Cena Rock stuff, right? And you said, Ed, one, and you made a great point, dude, that if Raw ends with, like, if, if Rock cuts a great promo to open the show and then Cena cuts a great promo to end the show, what are you going to remember? The thing that aired last, right? The, what, what the show went off the air with. And that I think that was the problem with Over the Limit. Every match on well, the... Oh, what did they close the show with? I didn't uh, find out. They had all those title matches, and then it, they had the uh, Laurinaitis uh, Cena thing. It was... That was it. The main event was Cena and Laurinaitis, and it sucked, bro. It was did brutal. Did they show like we expected? Or did yeah, it's it exact... No, it was so pre predictable. Everything we said, man. Exactly and, what yeah, we thought. Yeah, yeah, man, exactly. So, uh, you know... But the paper before that match, everything was awesome. I thought the pay per view was great up until the main event. But the pay per view ends and everybody forgets about the WWE title match, the world title match. Everybody forgets about everything that happened prior to the main well, event. You know. But like you said, the last thing you remember. So uh, overall, how bad did that drag the show down as a whole? What, what school other game was you getting? Well, l l l we'll run it down, man. But I would say, you know, like okay. a like a like a C or or maybe even a B minus, man. I just I didn't think the show was that bad, and I think the feed the feedback is is unfair, man. At least give it a solid C. You know what I mean? I don't know. No D, no D pluses, no F minus. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck out of here. Listen, they uh, they they love this uh, this pre-show stuff, right? And if you view the uh, the YouTube stats, they had about fifty or sixty thousand people on there. So they did it again, man. They had a pre-show, right? And it was they advertised, you know, on Raw the the previous week. It was going to be Kane versus Zack Ryder, 
And the match was basically, you know, Kane beat the shit out of him the entire match, and then Ryder got the late comeback, but it wasn't enough. He went for the Rough Rider, and Kane caught him, choke slam, one, two, three, and it was over. Then, also on the pre show, they hyped up, you know, earlier in the day that they were going to have a battle royal. And the winner of the Battle Royal would have the opportunity on the pay-per-view to, you know, face either Cody Rhodes the or, or the, well, oh, okay. the, the IC title or the U.S. title, right? And the winner oh, would, okay. they would face either, you know, Santino Morella or Cody Rhodes who's got the IC title. So what they did here is during the pre-show, they brought all the names out. Everybody had a separate entrance, right? So it was 7.59 Eastern time right before the pay-per-view and everybody was in the ring. And then the FBI warning, it was basically the pre-show is free. We're going to have a battle royal. Order the pay-per-view to find out what happens. It was genius, bro. It was a genius idea because you say, oh, my God, there's going to be a battle royal. Everybody's in the ring, but i got to order the pay-per-view to find out what happens, right? So then the FBI warning hit. Right. The FBI warning hit, blah, 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 and they went straight into the battle royal. And, and that's how the show started. The show started with a battle royal, and they wow. hyped they hyped okay, it up. I like it. Right, they hyped it up on the pre-show, and um, the the final thing on the pre-show, they brought everybody out. Everybody was in the ring, and they're like, "All right, we're ready to get this battle royal started." And then Christian's music hit. So Christian made his return on the pre-show, and you're like, "All right, now we're gonna have a battle royal." And we just had Christian who returned. Let's sort of the bill. Let's find out what happens. And then. And then you're saying, boom, pay per view started. And if you didn't order it, you were left with seeing Christian's return and like, oh, now what's happening? I got to order the pay per view. Exactly. It was a battle royal. And. That is brilliant. I mm-hmm. love that idea. That's what I'm saying. It was a great lead in and it made people, you know, order the pay per view or, or find a stream or do, <laughs> do whatever you do, you know? So the pay per view opened with a battle royal, right? And we had uh, Christian. Um, won the match. It came down to uh, who were the final three? It was Christian, David Otunga, and Miz, right? The Miz, yeah, it was Christian, David Otunga, wow. yeah, and the Miz. And uh, Santino won, or not Santino, Christian won, and then challenged Santino Morella for the U.S. <laughs> title. And we'll get back to that later in the show. So, you know, they opened the match on pay-per-view. Battle Royal it was a good Battle Royal for what it was, man. And it's going to be Christian versus Santino Morella, or th- so we thought, for the U.S. title, right? Um, and then the second match on the pay-per-view it was uh, R-Truth and Kofi Kingston against Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger for the WWE Tag Team titles. This was a good match, man. Two, right. two good matches to uh, to open the pay-per-view. Um, Kingston got the uh, the pin on Dolph Ziggler, hit the uh, Trouble in Paradise, and uh, that was that. I mean, Jerry Lawler so no was... Title uh, no title change, man. Jerry Lawler was over the top. I mean, the entire time on commentary, because Vicky Guerrero was out there with uh, Ziggler and, and Swagger, and she had a dress on, man, and it had, it was like one of those dresses where, excuse me? <laughs> it's a good one, yeah, I got it, <laughs> she had one of those dresses, dude, where the sides are cut out, so you could kind of see, you know, her, her belly, okay. her belly, right, and Jerry Lawler just was non-stop on commentary about the dress, that, yeah, oh, with, the, with the sides cut out, man. Ah, oh, dude, it was nonstop. So they did a backstage segment, and uh, Eve Torres is backstage. She's got Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins, who are, are basically two of WWE's biggest jobbers right now. And she says, I want you to go out there right now into the crowd, and I want you to take anybody's signs that are directed towards John Laurinaitis. And Eve says, you know, because Otunga was there too, and she was like, is this is this legal? And Otunga said, yeah, of course it's legal. Go out there and take the fucking signs. So later in the show, you saw those two out there ripping, ripping signs out of people's hands, anything that referred to uh, John Laurinaitis. Then we had our uh, Divas title match. It was Layla and Beth Phoenix on paper. Listen. I know it's the Divas, right? You know it's the Divas. I mean, it's a bathroom break, right? So you're saying for a Divas match, it was good. <laughs> you no, know, it wasn't, man. I don't think Layla is uh, is ready to return. On paper, it looked good, man. And the whole story during the match was, you know, Beth Phoenix would work over the right knee um, of Layla. 
and yep. then then eventually she came back and uh, hit a neck breaker um, for the one two three. But the match itself, it just wasn't it wasn't what you did. I, I know it's a divas match, man, but I, I expected more. And I don't think Layla's one hundred percent. Even for a divas match, it was bad. You think? Well, man, just, yeah. what happened to Awesome Kong? Is, is she back yet? Well, where is she? She's uh she's not back yet, man. They that as of wow, right now. It's rumored for the last pay per view to return. She's still not back. I I think they're they're holding off until we get close to the SummerSlam because they're eventually going to do yeah. they're going to do the big match between uh, Beth Phoenix and, and and Karma. You know what I mean? And we're still a couple months away from SummerSlam, and I think that's where that match yeah. is going to yeah. So they're probably going to hold it off a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, what else, what else, man? We had uh, Sheamus, Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, and Alberto Del Rio. This is the uh, fatal four-way match for uh, the... We had Alberto Del Rio. Hey, there it is. Yo, they did a All thing. Right. They did a thing on Raw last night with uh, Santino and Ricardo Rodriguez trying to do the uh, the tongue roll. They went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, it was geez. fucking. It was corny, dude. But it was kind of funny, no, man. Not I didn't... funny. As I say, it sounds like a fun. Little, yeah. It was, dude. I, I mean, you see, you see corny WWE comedy all the time. This was corny WWE comedy, but it was kind of funny, man. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not gonna shit over yeah. everything that WWE does. It's all right, right for what it was. They keep it short and they have a little goofy thing. You know, right. I like it. It's good. Uh, right. It's good. Um, so, dude, the Fatal 4-Way match, and this is where, I mean, listen, the Battle Royal, awesome match, right? Well, good match. R-Truth, the uh, tag team title match, good match, man. Layla and Beth Phoenix, eh, not so much. The Fatal 4-Way, awesome, dude. There were near fall after near fall after near fall. What? <laughs> there were near fall after near fall after near fall, dude. Um, and Seamus retained with um, White Noise, I guess, is, is the new name of his uh, of his finisher. Oh, well, he's got the Brogue Kick, but he's also got the White Noise, is what they're calling it. Um, so it came, uh, Orton did an RKO on Jericho and Del Rio as well, and then Seamus did a Brogue Kick on uh, Randy Orton, and then Jericho used the, uh, the Trunks. And uh, it was just near fall after near fall after near fall, man. Awesome match. Um, and in the end, who who, who went over? Who, who's the champ? Sheamus is uh, still world champion. Um, and then they followed okay. that up. I just got distracted if you said something. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's Sheamus is uh is still world champion. And it's just an awesome match with a ton of near falls. Then we had um, Brodus Clay and The Miz, dude. I mean, this is kind of corny. They did a, uh, you know, Miz was out there dancing, and then Brodus Clay eventually came out. Once again, Miz, at least he got on the pay-per-view card this time. I guess you got to give him that. Um, but it was just basically another squash, man, where it wasn't a squash. Um, but Miz, you know, wound up jobbing out at the end, and then after it was over, they invited all the kids into the ring, and Brodus Clay, and everybody danced, you know what I mean? It was corny. It was, you yeah. Know. Um, and then, they had, they had a backstage, that, remember I told you earlier, man, it was, uh, Christian had challenged Santino Morella for the U.S. title. Well, there was a backstage segment, and Cody Rhodes is basically talking to Eve Torres about how Christian was so smart, and he didn't want to pick him. He didn't want to face Cody Rhodes because, you know, he'll legitimize the U.S. title, blah, 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 blah. And then Christian showed up from behind and was like, you know what, dude, I changed my, I changed my mind. I want to face you now for the IC title. Uh, so Christian came back as a face, man. He's, he's, he's no longer with the heel guy. He's yeah. funny. He's a good funny face. Exactly, dude. I love that. I love the fact that he's... Captain Charisma. <laughs> there you go. Um, so we had Cody Rhodes and Christian for the IC title. Another really good match, man. Uh, Christian, new champion here. New uh, IC champion. Christian hit right. the uh, the kill switch. So they're giving him a push, man. They gave him the IC title. He's back as a baby face. Nothing wrong with that, right? I like it. I like uh, it. Not bad. Then we had uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. There's no way, man. On paper, I used to watch these guys brawl in Ring of Honor. There's just no way, man, that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan will have a bad, uh, will have a bad match. This is for obviously for the WWE title. Awesome match, man. Once again, tons of uh, tons of near falls from from these two. And uh, CM Punk, the the finish was kind of odd, man. Um, CM Punk tapped out. But Daniel Bryan had tapped out first, you know what I mean? So they gave it, and then they followed up with an angle on Monday Night Raw um, where, you know, Daniel Bryan came out. Ba it was basically, Bryan had the yes lock, Daniel Bryan had the yes lock, and Punk cradled him, 
and Brian still had the yes block on, and Brian tapped out first, and then Punk tapped out after that. Or P Brian didn't tap out. Brian got the uh, Punk got the roll up, and then after the roll up, Punk tapped out. So it was a matter of yeah, I, I can see that's a clever little thing. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't bad, and then they followed it up on a uh, Monday Night Raw. So we have uh, CM Punk. Still WWE champion. Once again, an awesome match, man. So you had CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Cody. It sounds like it's been a bunch of good matches. Yeah. Like, yeah it was like a city main event. That was it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, the Brodus Clay Miz stuff, which was kind of cheesy, man. Um, but listen, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Cody Rhodes, Christian, the tag team title match, the Fatal Four Way match. These are all really good matches, man. And then they. Uh, did Brodus Clay and Miz have a singles match? They did, yeah, yeah. It was basically. Did both play do a lot of selling again, or was it a squash? No, it wasn't a complete squash. I mean, Miz had offense, dude, but in the end, uh -huh. you know, yeah, Miz wound up taking the pin, so they jobbed him out. Like I said, man, at least they got a, uh, at least Miz was on pay-per-view. You know what I mean, dude? At least he got a bonus. Yeah, but Bonus Clay is supposed to be a monster still. They shouldn't have him selling for somebody small like the Miz. I mean, if he was against Kane or somebody, then he could, you know, bump a little bit, but not for Miz. Right. Guys, get to our live He's chat. To be a killer. Get to our live chat room, WZROnline.com. Right, slash chat once again wzronline.com slash chat there's like a two cent not even a two cent like a one second delay it's just because they're on a cell phone it's not a big deal but yeah, no, yeah. I'm trying to work around it but what can you do yeah it's all good dude it's all good I'm, I'm taking care of things we had uh, right before the main event dude they had you know basically I mean you can't go right in from an awesome match into the main event they always put that you know, what's the word I'm looking for? The match right before the main uh, event. A swing match. A swing match. There you a go. Bridge, a bridge match. So yeah. we we had uh, Camacho came out, uh, part of the faction with, uh, you know, Rosa Mendez and, and everybody else there. And Ryback. Uh, Ryback got no crowd reaction. It was like, who the fuck is this guy, man? Um, and it was basically, you know, Ryback clotheslined uh, Unico off the ring apron and uh, used the spine buster, power bomb, and Samoa drop. On Camacho got the pin. It only went two minutes, so it it wasn't that bad, and it was just kind of a crowd, you know, to to get the crowd back well, into it before the main event, you know. I I don't see why they would expect anything different. Okay, they're trying to remake Goldberg. Now let's say take another big star. If they tried to remake Stone Cold Steve Austin, they have this character that falls with a goatee and he comes out and he flips people off and he drinks beer. Mm -hmm. People would be like, well, this is lame. They're ripping off all... If they had somebody come out in yellow shirts saying, eat your, you know, say your prayers, they'd be like, what the fuck? You know, this is lame. Now, if they do that with Goldberg, they think it would get over because Goldberg was just a, you know, an ass kicker. But, you know, if right. it's designed and packaged exactly like Goldberg, what do you expect? The crowd's going to well, be like, well, this is a ripoff. Well, the crowd, the, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny you bring that up because every time he comes out, the crowd chants, Goldberg, <laughs> Goldberg, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> So I don't know, but that was the uh, that was the filler that was the uh, the filler match before the main event, and then in the main event, dude, this is what I guess killed the pay per view for most people. But man, you can't forget about all the matches that happened before this. This is why it wasn't all that bad of a pay per view. But when you have a main event match like this, man, and then you go off the air with it, you leave that impression like, oh man, dude, that was. Yeah, it, it, it leaves a bad taste in the, in the audience's mouth, and that's not what you want to do. Exactly, dude. And everybody forgot about the WWE title match, the Fatal 4-Way match, the World title. You know what I mean? Everybody forgot about that stuff. So, I thought it was yeah, a good... Yeah, it. Yeah. And then, listen, man. We talked about it last week, WZR Radio, right? You knew that Big Show... I mean, Big Show got fired last week on Raw. Laura and I just fired him. So, during the match, I mean, it was basically John Cena, and give it up for John Laurinaitis, man. He uh, got a standing ovation um, when he went behind the curtains. I mean, he took an ass whooping, dude. And the guy's 50-something years old. Like, okay, it wasn't a great match, I'm sure, but was, like, was Laurinaitis, did he look like a manager wrestler, or did he look like a wrestler wrestler? It was, uh, compare it to, like, a street fight, man, where they did stuff outside the ring, and, and Laurinaitis oh, was just taking an ass whooping. It was, it was more comedy, bro. More comedy. But was he taking any bumps, like body slams? Oh, or, yeah, or yeah. Lines, no, I mean, Cena threw him into the ring steps, put him on the announce table. I mean, he took a lot of bumps, man. It was bump after bump for, for Lauren wow. Ives, dude. It wasn't, it wasn't no, like... I mean, he, like, resting bumps. Was he doing, like, was he taking, like, suplexes and body slams and clotheslines and... 
Well, I mean, the, the, listen, I, I, uh, here and there, here, here and there, but it was more, uh, more a brawl. I mean, they brought a fire, okay. Cena, Cena brought a fire extinguisher in at one point and blasted him with it. Um, you know, Cena took a garbage can full of garbage and, and dumped it on him. It was basically John Cena beat the shit out of Laurinaitis in more of a street fight type brawl. And then Big Show came out through the crowd and, you know, teased that he was going to take out John Laurinaitis. And then at the end of the match, he, uh, you know, Cena went for the attitude adjustment. And that's when Big Show hit the uh, the knockout punch. And, you know, everybody was like, what the hell? All my, you know, yeah, Jerry Lawler's going, what the hell? Are you kidding me, Big Show? What, what are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And then that was it. There wasn't much wrestling, dude. It was more of a street well, fight. Who went over? Cena went over? Ah uh, no, Laurinaitis got Laurinaitis got the uh, the win because Big Show came out. Wow. Hit, Laurinaitis came out and and not only that, bro, but the entire show. Okay, the entire show. You had Jerry Lawler on commentary and and everybody like even in backstage segments, all the baby faces were, were saying, you know, after tonight it's going to be a new era. John Laurinaitis is no longer going to be here. Everybody knows that Cena's going to beat him. Everybody knows Cena's going to win the main event tonight, and that's your sign right there, where everybody's like so confident. Oh yeah, Cena's definitely winning. There's no way that John Laurinaitis is going to win this match. Of course, that means Laurinaitis is going to win. You know what I mean? You could tell. Well, yeah. Well, that's what the big show said. If everybody knew. He's going to turn heel and cost him the match. But what I don't get is everybody also knew Brock Lesnar was going to go over on Cena, and they chose to go the other way and have Cena go over on Brock, <coughs> which was the dumbest thing they've ever done in a long time. Right. Same at WrestleMania. Everybody was expecting uh, Cena to win because he was staying and Rock was leaving, so they have Rock win. Now, in this one, everybody's expecting Cena to win, but uh, no, let's give Long Nights to win. Yeah, but I mean, listen, they're going to. Uh, you got to say the, the people power leader or whatever, I guess. But, you know, is that that important, really? It was it was just so you know you knew it was coming just the way that they were doing the commentary just the way that all the baby faces backstage were saying you know Cena's definitely winning you just knew that Laurinaitis was going to go over and how are they going to do that they're going to have Big Show come out and it was obvious we talked about it last week of course see it a mile away. Yeah. you could see it a mile away man I put that up on my Facebook page you know it was just so. I, usually they try to pull a swerve or, or something like that, man, and they, there was just none of that at Over the Limit. But other than that, man, I know we're talking bad about the main event. Of course, listen, it's the main event of a pay-per-view. Everybody wants you to, you know, go off the air, and everybody was disappointed, you know. Lauren Itis wins. Now we got to have more of him on Monday Night Raw, but it's the way it works. But don't forget about the rest of the pay-per-view. So after running it down, as far as a, uh, you know, a school letter grade... Well, I mean from a going forward point of view, uh, view too, yeah. if Cena wins, you're not really looking forward to seeing Raw the next night as much as if Laurinaitis wins, and then like, alright, well, now what's going to happen? You, know, like, you would watch Raw for that. Well, they're going to do a rematch, you know? They're, they're going to do a, a rematch at, uh, at No Way no. Out. Yeah, they're going to oh, do... No Way Out before SummerSlam? Yeah, that's the next one, man. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to have that. They, um... They announced um, at the, uh, you know, at Monday Night Raw, and we're going to get into uh, Raw here in just a couple minutes. Uh, but the No Way, the No Way Out main event is going to be uh, John Cena versus The Big Show, um, and then there's going to be a stipulation um, here, you know, in the next couple weeks, and it's probably going to be something like, you know, if John Cena wins, John Laurinaitis is going forever. If Big Show wins, uh, you know, something like that, dude, where John Laurinaitis is somehow going to involve himself or be involved in the uh, in the finish of, of that match because no way out. I mean, there were plans at one time to have every match inside a, uh, a steel cage. You know, no way out makes sense. Yeah. Steel cage, but I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna go that route anymore. It'd be a but bit of a tip of uh, DNA's lockdown, though. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? But but listen, both companies rip off at each other. You know what I mean? It happens all the time, man. WWE, TNA, they both take ideas from each other, man. I mean, it's not one one company takes more ideas than the other. It happens both ways. It happens all the time. You know? So, anyways, so that was over the limit from uh, this past Sunday night. Monday Night Raw from last night, this sucked, man. Raw, Raw wasn't good. I'll give you was that, man. Was it bad? No, <laughs> and there was, you didn't miss the rating, it. Uh, has the rating come out yet? Yeah, 3.0. 3.0. So it went from 2.9 last week, and then the, the, the 
post pay per view show did a 3.0. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, at least it went up, I guess. Or I don't want up a 10. Yeah, it's got to go up because of the pay per view. That's that's not enough, though. It went up back to a 3. It should at least a 3 1. Yeah, it's not good, man. It's not good. And not only that, but then they put on shows like that. And there were creative rewrites yesterday at the show. I mean, at one point, dude, during the afternoon, and we put this up uh, as an exclusive on the website, at one point yesterday during the afternoon hours, John Laurinaitis was not scheduled to be on Monday Night Raw last night. And then, and if you noticed, there were no vignettes backstage of John Laurinaitis at all throughout the night, which means they didn't even have time to tape anything. They made changes so late during the day that they didn't have time to do backstage segments and vignettes and, and things like that. They had them live in the opening segment, and they had them live in the ending segment. But other than that, there were no, there was no you know backstage segments with uh, with Laurinaitis last night. So just goes to show man and that, that's what happens though dude if you're if you're still rewriting a live tea listen you've got a week okay to think about this man or we'll give him wednesday thursday friday saturday so we'll give him five days man you got five days to think about it and then it's like they get backstage to raw on monday night and they do all these creative changes, man. And it makes – just go with your original plans, man. Stop changing things around at the last minute. I mean, figure it out during the week. And then don't don't edit any. Just, just, I could say tweaking, like, like tweaking yeah, things. Yeah, like a little bit. A little, but don't change it to the opposite because you think people expect something. Like if you think – like like you got to give them the credit for that with Over the Limit. Everybody expected a big <laughs> show to turn. Right. And normally that means that, well, let's not have them turn then. That, that way nobody sees it coming. But this time they said, well, no, we need to do that because that's where the storyline needs to go. Right. So they, they stuck to their guns even though everybody was expecting it. But like you're saying, usually with Raw and like the Raw Night is back, they, they always change it because people are expecting this and that. And, and that's not good. Just do write a show and do the show. Don't change it because, oh, well, they think this is coming. We don't want them to know that, you know, just do it. Tell just, the story. Just, yeah, just go with what you have, man. And like you said, just do little tweaks, man. But don't have, you know, during the morning and early afternoon hours. You know, yesterday at 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The whole show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but yesterday, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, John Laurinaitis is not on that show. He's going to sell injuries from the night before, right? And he couldn't make it to Raw. He's going to sell injuries. And then, what you wind up with Raw... Only, what, six, seven hours later is John Laurinaitis in the opening and, and ending segments of Raw. It's like, damn, man, what what are you doing? You know what I mean? I don't, yeah. yeah. All right. So, Monday Night Raw last night, right? We have John Cena come out, and it was the corny John Cena again, but it wasn't, it wasn't over the top, man. It was like a, it was like a, how do I say? It was like a good, corny John Cena promo. I know that doesn't. It was, yeah, it was bad. But uh, please tell me there was some Heyman or something like that. No Heyman last night, brother. Hey. Yes. <laughs> no Heyman. No Heyman at all. No. Was there any Triple H? No Triple H. No Brock Lesnar. No Brock Lesnar. Wow. So mm. just back to normal crap now. Nada, bro. Absolutely nada. I mean, they did this whole lawsuit thing the week before, and nada. Zero. Zilch. The main storyline on Monday Night Raw that they've been hyping up is the whole lawsuit between Triple H and Paul Heyman. Nothing yeah. last night. Nothing. Nothing at the pay-per-view, and then nothing on the follow-up. Nothing at the pay-per-view, nothing on Raw last night. Nothing, man. On the, on the... Did they announce anything for uh, Raw next week? Nothing, nothing, no, no, uh, nothing, nothing for next week, no plugs, nothing, it was like, oh man, what are you doing, and that could have had to do anyway, with, that, that could have, they did this big show up with it, and then it's going to be put on hold until they feel like getting close to the SummerSlam, I guess, that, that, uh, yeah, probably, I mean, Brock's going to be back at SummerSlam, we'll That's probably stupid. have why, it, yeah. why should, well, they shouldn't have even started it yet then, you know, they should have just waited until, it, you know, Oh, somebody in Rygow says uh, they said that Triple H is at, uh, he's in Connecticut with his lawyers discussing the legal courses that they can take with the lawsuit. So, you know what, it, it probably it probably had something to do with the creative rewrites, man. Like I said earlier, you had John Laurinaitis in the opening segment, you had John Laurinaitis in the ending segment. Maybe one of those segments was originally planned for, you know, a Triple H, Paul Heyman type deal. It just didn't happen, man. It was creative rewrites, you know I mean? 
I, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll find out more details here in the uh, in the coming days. But there was a ton of stuff that went down backstage at Raw yesterday. Um, so they come out right. We got John Cena, and he's cutting this promo, and he's playing off Jerry Lawler, saying, "What? What the hell? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Vigil? What the hell happened? Right?" So okay. <laughs> he wants answers, right? And uh, eventually, one by one, all of uh, the Laurinaitis crew comes out, right? You have Eve Torres comes out first, right? And she introduces John Laurinaitis. Laurinaitis comes out on, you know, when you go into a grocery store, dude, and there's some little carts for the old ladies. They drive them around. They get the groceries. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He came out riding one of those things, and it had people power on the front of it. And, um, Laurinaitis, man. And he had crutches. Oh, my God. He had crutches and everything else, man. He was selling the injuries from the oh, night before, man. right? And he says that tonight nobody is, is allowed to lay a finger on me, and if they do, you're going to be fired. And then he goes on to say, I rehired the big show on Saturday. Well, dude, <laughs> if you rehired the big show on Saturday in the stipulation for the match on Sunday was that any employee that interferes in the match will be oh, wow. will they be, really do that? Will be fired and then Oh my god. So he comes up so uh, Yeah, yeah, the the situation cuz the whole loophole was okay, on Sunday anybody gets interfered, they're fired. But Big Show had already been fired, so he could interfere just fine because he's not part of it. And then they right. said, well, he was rehired Saturday. So, so then he should have been fired. <laughs> so he says, I rehired, wow. I, re I rehired him on Saturday night. Yet he comes out and he interferes in the main event. And as soon as he said it, you could tell that Vince must have went flipping shit backstage because Jerry Lawler all was he had all to over. Say was I rehired him earlier today no. or something? <laughs> well, Jerry, Jer and, and you know that Vince is backstage and he's screaming into Lawler's headset. Tell him it was a verbal agreement. It was a verbal agreement. It wasn't a signed contract. <laughs> and Jerry Lawler selling it. You know, it was a verbal agreement. It wasn't signed. Blah 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 blah. Commentator, it's like, oh man, bro. Of all the wow. fuck, was, that. And then all over Twitter today, WWE saying verbal agreement. WWE.com. It was a verbal agreement. They're trying to cover their own asses for this. Dude. Yeah. It was Jesus. horrible. What? Get Laurinaitis on TV already. Just get him off. Get <laughs> so speaking of it. speaking of the guy that was rehired. On uh, on Saturday night, Laurinaitis brings them out. So that's number three, right? We have Eve Torres out, and then we have John Laurinaitis, and then we've been, then we've got the Big Show comes out, and Cena wants answers, right? Cena wants answers from the Big Show, and he says, uh, you know, Big Show said that the whole point of uh, you know, a a he said everybody's entitled to you know his explanation, and he said that he loves this business more than anything, and. If it was any of us, we would have done the same thing. We would have got down. We would have cried. We would have begged for our jobs back, man. And and basically, if you don't like it, screw you. I'm back. I got my job back, and I had to do what I had to do to get it back. And then... Right. Even so, though I should have been fired. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. So anyways, um, next out, who's left, right? We already had John Laurinaitis, the big show, Eve Torres. Who's, who's left? Who's left, Boone, the guy with the coffee mug? David Otunga. David Otunga comes uh, out, and basically, whatever. yeah, David Otunga comes out, and uh, he basically says that tonight, I want you, Cena, and Cena says, dude, if you come down here right now, I'm going to beat the shit out of you, bro, I'm just, I'm going to fuck you up, man, and Otunga says, well, then so be it, and he starts to walk to the ring, and then he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, cut my music, and he says, um, Johnny, I want to, I want to dedicate this match to, uh, to you. And uh, then we go to a break. We come back, and we had John Cena defeated David Otunga. It was quick, man. It was complete squash. We had uh, an FU and an STF. Bing, bing, bing. Boom, boom, boom. Done. One, two, three. We had uh, Titus O'Neil. We had uh, Titus O'Neil, Darren Young, Tyler Rex, and Kurt Hawkins. Jesus. You talk about the job squad, man. Titus O'Neil. <laughs> Titus O'Neil, Darren Young, Tyler Rex, and Kurt Hawkins. They all came out and... Uh, Attacked John Cena after the match. Sheamus came down for the uh, for the save, and uh, they cleared house. And then Lauren, can you, Itis... name, can you name two people from the old WWE stable, the Job Squad? At least two. There was many of them. Can you name two? Was Stevie Richards in there? I don't. I think he was, but he wouldn't be one of you would think of. Uh, Holly, Holly, of Bob, Bob Holly, Bob Holly was okay. in there. Bob Holly was in I there. Don't think Bob, I don't think he was. No, yeah. the ones that I'm, I'm thinking of Al Snow yeah. and the Blue Meanie. 
That's what everybody in the chat room is saying. Al Snow and uh, and Blue Meanie. There you go. Yeah. yeah, those are the two that I'm thinking of. Yeah. No Holly. I was just watching. Well, the, well, that, uh, that's, uh, the B, that's the B. That's the BWO. No, no, no. BWO was Stevie Richards, Blue Meanie, and uh, Nova. Okay. All right. Job Squad was a WWF table when uh, Al Snow had head and Blue Meanie. They, but uh, <coughs> anyways, I was watching Toughen Up Two, and Al Snow was a trainer. That's what it reminded me. Oh, gotcha. We yeah. Back when it was on MTV, it was the one that uh, Jackie Gator won and uh, Linda Miles, the black chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're no he longer. Was born, Maven and Lydia won. Yeah, nobody, nobody from Tough Enough makes it, dude. Maven, Lydia, uh, who else is there? Yeah, nobody. Johnny no. Nitro, uh, John Morrison, he was on there. Shad Gatford. Uh, failed the physical, but he was gonna be on. Yeah, you know, nobody, so. nobody. Yeah, but any, it, it's like tough enough as a fucking curse, bro. It's a curse. Scott dude. Matthews became an interviewer. He still works. There. That's true. That's about the only one. Miz, you're right. Miz, yeah, people, much. people in the chat. Miz, Miz was one of them. You're right. Josh Matthews. Miz wasn't on tough enough, was he? Yeah, he was. was. On, uh, the real world. No, he was on tough enough. Miz was on tough enough. He was on the real world and tough enough. Yeah, man, he I came. He was on the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he came in on uh, on tough. I remember Miz on uh, on tough enough, no doubt. John Morris. I remember, do you remember Hawk, the crazy guy on season two? This is how I know how long the show's been going on. Because the season two was in 2001, I we, want to say. We, we had him and on. We interviewed, yeah, we interviewed Hawk from Tough Enough 2, like, the, the second the fucking series ended, and they were allowed to talk. Because they can't talk until the series ends, for spoilers. Right. And the second the series ended, he was on telling us about how Bob Holly really liked him. And I was like, wow, we've been doing shows. And that wasn't even, like, a new show at the time. We had already been doing it for a while, so we've been doing this. For like 12 fucking years I, it, it's crazy man I dude it time so flies weird. Dude, my my little uh, Haley, bro. Haley's gonna be seven coming up in July. Seven? I remember her when she was a baby, man. Just a little baby. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm so, down here with my my sisters down here. My little nephew. I got the uh the, the newborn nephew. I, I don't know how old he is. Oh know. my god. Uh, how old How old's Tyler right Tyler, now? Tyler. Tyler. Tyler is ten or eleven years old. It's crazy. He's getting so big. Wow, he's ten or eleven. I remember him when he was yes. a baby, man. When he was a little remember baby. When you, remember when you uh, remember when me and you when we were rooming in New York? We came down here to visit. We went to that porno convention in Miami, yeah, and then we yeah. went to uh, Vegas. Yeah. But anyways, while we were down here, uh, Tyler, as soon as we got the airplane, we were coming to my parents' house to uh, hang out and uh, meet my family. Uh, my little <coughs> nephew Tyler at the time, he could barely walk. He had to have been eight months old, maybe a year old. He stumbles over to us, he grabs our cigarettes, and he starts packing them. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when he would do that? Yeah, stuff? So dude. Cute, man. He's crazy, man. He is crazy. He's, He's been crazy. doing the radio show since then. I know. It's nuts. It is nuts, man. Time flies. Uh, guys, get to our live chat room, WZRonline.com. .com. Wow, that was cheesy. Let's try that. WZR I, I got the echo. WZRonline.com I'm in someone else's house. I can't be really loud. Right <laughs> All right, my bad, dude. <laughs> All right, dot com slash chat. WZRonline.com slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there tonight. Lots of people on the live stream. We're going to take a, uh, a commercial break here in about five minutes. Let's get through uh, Monday Night Raw. Then we're going to come back, run down all the breaking news over the past week, talk about Raw going three hours, Impact going live, China's meltdown over the weekend, Ric Flair quitting TNA. You don't have many uh, details on that, Boone. I got some, man, Ric Flair is a mess. No, the last thing I remember was uh, that WWE signed Ashley Flair to be a new diva. We put pictures up. I didn't know Ric Flair quit TNA, though. That's, that's yeah. big. Well, he we stopped showing up, man. We'll get into it in, uh, in hour number two. Um, so, listen, we go to the break after uh, Cena basically squashed Otunga. And uh, main event set, it's going to be a lumberjack match. Sheamus and Cena versus three opponents of his choosing in a lumberjack match. We had uh, Santino Morella came out, made fun of uh, Ricardo Rodriguez's accent, and said basically, you don't roll your R's, right? And uh, they went back and forth, and it was comedy, dude. It was just strictly for uh, for comedy. Yeah, what happened with uh, some of the key guys? Chris Jericho? Um, Park, where are these guys going? Well, let's see. They, they hyped up Randy Orton, uh, defeated Alberto Del Rio. Uh, that was by okay. disqualification. Um, Chris Jericho ran out here and uh, basically, you know, beat the shit out of uh, Randy Orton. Looks like they're going to, obviously, they're going to do a feud between those two. On paper, that looks good, man. Randy Orton, I like for it. sure. Yeah, right? good promos, good matches. Uh, yeah. Jericho didn't get any talking time. 
Um, no, no, he grabbed. Mm -hmm. Well, he grabbed the mic after it was over and basically, you know, screamed at him. Got right, got right in his face. You know, he kept hitting the uh, the code breaker. Hit it two or three times and then said, you know, I'm the best in the world. Blah 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 blah. You'll never beat me. This, that, and the right. other thing. So we had that. How about CM Punk? Did he get a problem? Well, we had that. Daniel Bryan came out. Uh, that was after this. Uh, Daniel Bryan came out and basically said, you know, it's an injustice that he's not WWE champion. And he said that he made Punk tap out and he showed you know, a replay, and uh, eventually CM Punk comes out and says, listen, dude, even though I tapped out, I rolled you up and got the one, two, three before I tapped out, man, and you didn't let go, so I won the match, you didn't win, right? Uh, Punk then announced that tonight, um, he's been told that Daniel Bryan is going to be wrestling Kane, and then they put CM Punk on commentary during the Daniel Bryan versus um, Kane there you match. Go. Was that good? That was all. Punk's great on it. But I'll tell you what, when Punk is done, you know, in ring wise in, in WWE, I guarantee you he becomes a commentator at some point down the line. He should. He does good. I remember once he was calling a match, you know, John Cena versus somebody. Right. This was before Punk even really blew up, and uh, he had a diet soda right. on his uh, announce table, and uh, Cena knocked it over, and CM Punk's like, wait, wait, John, John, my diet soda. <laughs> and then John Cena, like, John Cena keeps beating up whoever he's wrestling, and then he picks up the diet soda, puts it on there, and kind of, like, wipes the top off, like, sorry, here you go, sir. And then he went back to his match. It was... It was a funny little fight I remember seeing on YouTube once. They're doing a thing. They did a, uh, a thing backstage with uh, AJ. They did it the week before where, you know, she's coming on to CM Punk, and CM Punk keeps shying away. Well, last night, you know, he gave her a hug and was like, you know what, I kind of dig crazy chicks. So it looks like AJ and uh, CM Punk are going to be teaming up. You yeah. know, she'll be... AJ's she, hot. Yeah, she is a hottie, man. AJ's definitely a hottie. Yeah, how about that? I was talking about YouTube clips. Have you ever seen the one where CM Punk jumps off the top and in the mid... In the mid Flight, he goes, I'm flying! Yeah. And he does his high body yep, 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 I've seen it. Being punk the man, dude, you gotta love it. So, uh, Daniel Bryan basically, uh, well, not basically, defeated uh, Kane with a uh, with a DQ. After the match was over, you know, <laughs> punk, punk, uh, punk got off commentary and uh, went after Daniel Bryan. Uh, looks like they're gonna do a Punk versus Daniel Bryan rematch, I believe, man. You know, they set it up yeah. last night on Raw. Yes! <laughs> we had, uh, this is, you know, after that, they had the backstage segment with, uh, AJ. You had, uh, Christian, new, uh, IC champion, defeated Jinder Mahal. Um, uh, this, I mean, the crowd was dead during this, and, uh, Christian got the win, hit the, uh, kill switch, and, uh, then a frog splash, and got the win, and then, uh, Quick Divas match, dude. We had uh, Beth Phoenix defeated Kelly Kelly. And in the main event, it was uh, John Cena and Sheamus. They went to a no contest against Lord Tenzai, Dolph Ziggler, and Jack Swagger. Uh, all the Lumberjacks were heels during the match, right? It was John Laurinaitis' match. He was picking the three opponents that were going to face Cena and Sheamus. And it was all heel Lumberjacks. So once again, once again, while you're watching this, you're thinking, okay, You've got all heel lumberjacks. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. Are all the faces at some point during this match going to run out and there's going to be a big brawl on the ring? Of course, bro. You can see the shit yeah. from a mile yeah, away. Course. You can see it from a mile away, man. So the whole point, I'm thinking, all right, when are the baby faces going to run down and when are they, you know, they going to take out you know, all the all the heels that are at ringside? So eventually that happened. All the faces ran out. They made the save. And uh, Cena basically walks away from this whole battle royal or this heel versus babyface thing in the ring and he's trying to he's looking for the big show so they get backstage and he runs into John Laurinaitis and you know Cena says I want to know right now where's the big show and this is how Raw went off the air Laurinaitis says I've got no idea and you can't touch me and he walks away and out of nowhere big show hits the uh, the knockout punch in the back parking lot and Raw ends with John Laurinaitis walking in front and the big show about 50 feet behind them, and they walk off into the sunset to end Monday Night Raw last night. All right. Well, yeah, that's cool it. Letter grade. What do we think? Um, oh, man, I got to go a C- minus on this one, man. C-. minus. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, C-. Minus. But, um, Anybody in the, the chat? Thing before we go to break, we, we can't talk on AOL, we can't talk on chat or anything like that. Yeah. How are we doing? Because I'm not, I haven't had anything to drink, but I'm getting distracted a lot. I don't know if it's in the cell phone, I don't know how the quality is, you want, it's so bad this week. You want me to be honest with you? I'm carrying this shindig. I want you to be honest. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, go ahead and talk. I'm carrying this shindig, and I think we're doing a great, I mean, you didn't, for, for a guy that didn't see Over the Limit or Monday Night Raw, Oh, you're doing an awesome job, man. I'm carrying it, man. I've right. seen it. You know, I've seen both Raw and Over the Limit, so I know what's going down. And you're you just did kinda, a great rundown. You're yeah. just, you're just kind of chiming.
coming in, you know what I mean, dude? I knew, you know what I mean? We're I'm good. I'm trying, man. If the conditions I'm working with right now, <laughs> you'd have no, it's, it's shocking that I'm even here. And again, Brother. for the record, yeah. we had just pulled in. I'm in a complete stranger's house. They say, they kicked some kid out of the room. They're like, here, let him go in here. <laughs> it felt so bad. But I was like, all right, it's going to be. Ah. Here, people keep coming in and out. But, uh, like, literally, the second I sat down, yeah. you called me and said, all right, call in. So I was like, oh, shit. Oh, let me put my food down. Let me, uh, let me figure it out. And we're live. I'm like, oh, I'm not even ready. <laughs> no, yeah, we're right. we're good, man. We're good. Right. And, and not only that, but it, it always gets better in uh, an hour t number two. We're going to come back. Listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play the Big Show promo from last night. It's about three minutes long. Um, then we're going to play, uh, I don't know, I'll play some corn. I love that Coming Undone song. So we're going to play that. We'll come back. Uh, it'll be about a five or six minute break. Come back. On the flip side, we're going to be talking Raw going to three hours. Impact going live. The China fiasco from this past weekend. And is there any, uh, there was Strike Force this past weekend we talking about. Is there any UFC coming up this weekend? I'm not even sure. I believe there's UFC on this. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll check on it during the break, and uh, we'll, okay, uh, we'll come back. All right, here we go. We are going to break. You're listening to WZR Radio with Matt Boone and Ryan Clark. We'll be back right after this big show promo from Monday Night Raw last night. All right, and we're back here for hour number two. Real quick, guys, um, you may have heard me typing during the break. Um, you can go to WZRonline.com, WZRonline.com, and I believe you hit the post button. And we are up. We've got a uh, live WWE SmackDown spoilers um, in progress right now. You guys are going to notice that they are taping NXT, which is uh, kind of a surprise. Uh, basically, they are still taping Season 5, um, and that's what they've taped tonight at the SmackDown taping. So the new tapings for uh, Season 6 and 7... Um, I believe, uh, you know, they have already been taped at Full Sail University, um, and they're going to be airing soon. So basically the reason for NXT being taped tonight is uh, just to, you know, finish out Season 5, and uh, then, then we'll go from there. So live SmackDown spoilers right now at WZRonline.com. I don't believe we have uh, Matt Boone back just yet, but um, we'll get some plugs out of the way while we wait for him. Let him munch down a sandwich or whatever he's doing. Um, I put the uh, the rapid fire segment up. It's at facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Did I do that? I think I did that during the break. A lot going on during the break. Doing SmackDown spoilers. Yeah, the uh, rapid, se rapid fire segment is now up at facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Um, WZR. There he is. What's going on, man? It just came back. We. Uh, Sorry, I was getting a drink. Yeah. Oh, it's all good, dude. We. Uh, I plug the. You know, we've got live SmackDown spoilers right now at wzronline.com, and uh, the rapid fire segment is also up. Hopefully, we have time to do rapid fire segment tonight at some point. By the way, mm. UFC this weekend is uh, Frank Mir and Dos Santos, man. That's this weekend. That's this Saturday, man. Oh shit! How am I gonna see that? Oh no. Yeah. Well, I'll get I'm you. I'm gonna be out of town until way past. Damn, I don't well, even have a computer to watch it, man. Yeah, if you can get to a computer, I can uh, I can hook you up. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah, if man. you if you can't get that to a computer, sucks. that's a good card. Yeah, Strike Force is pretty good this past weekend too. Um, listen, before we get into that, um, I wanna we let's, let's talk about this breaking news, man. I, I let me uh, Jesus, man, I got all fucking discombobulated in the uh, in the break. Good lord. Um, let me see here. Mother. The the Brent, no, it's all, it's my fault, man. We had, um, I guess, you know, let's, let's get China out of the way real quick. Um, basically, there was a... A face or a passing out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there was, there was a porno convention, um, Exotica, right, where they hold this porn, sure. porno convention, and it was in, uh, Las Vegas. Well, on Thursday, I believe it was, she, uh, she passed out in the lobby of a hotel, and, uh, you know, she insisted that she was okay, and they didn't take her to the hospital, and, uh, they, you know, they put her back in her hotel room and said, listen, calm yourself down, blah, 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 blah. The following night, um, she was found passed out. Basically, what happened is her and a friend, another porn star, you clearly tell by the photos on TMZ, her and another porn star got nude and jumped into a pool. And she was then found passed out 
in the pool and thank God somebody went over and got to her otherwise she probably would have drowned and she was passed out in the pool she was passed out in the pool nude and wow. somebody you know and they had to get her out of the pool and then they took her um, to a hospital to to get checked out, man. And not only that, but she was banned from the venue. Um, I don't know where, you know which which pool she was, but they were pissed, and she pissed off a lot of people, man. And um, you know, and then there was the third you incident. Be doing that. You got to show up in proper condition. I mean, unlike me with radio, this is like a public appearance, you know, in person. You can't be, you can't disguise it, and people can see you, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, she's she's rock bottom, man. Somebody in the chat room, you know, how far she hit rock bottom, Vader 86. I mean, she's right there. If you're showing up to appearances and doing things like that, I mean, you are at rock oh, bottom. Oh, remember the infamous Howard Stern appearance where she was falling asleep on the air and yeah. all over, so, stripping naked and just being a whore completely? It was bad. Yeah, I, she's a mess. And you know what? The, the sad part is she got cleaned up for a little while, and she was fine, man. You would see media interviews and things like that, and she was all right. And then... You know, I mean, listen, the two easiest way, if you're in Hollywood or if you're at a porn convention, you can score drugs at the snap of your finger, man. I mean, drugs are yeah, rampant. Yeah. Drugs drugs are absolutely rampant. There is no other business, uh, well, there's businesses all over the place, but the porn business um, is filled with drugs. And I would say, you know, 80% of porn stars are on some kind of drugs and, and they do oh, it yeah. for the money. They do it for the money. I mean, there's money to be made in porn. These women get addicted to drugs and then they go into porn and, you know, there's drugs left and right well, in the, the, in the sleazy, porn. That's the, sleazy, that's the sleazy crowd that's always around porn stars. It's the same as they say, uh, runway models are all heroin addicts. Right. So they can say thin, you know. Mm -hmm. Exactly, dude. And, and that's what it is, man. And she got herself into the porn business, probably to score drugs, so it's probably one of the reasons. She knows that it's very easy in the porn industry to score drugs, and, you know, a lot of porn stars' money, I mean, that's why, that's why they're doing it. That's why they're doing porn, because they, they need money for drugs, and porn pays well. So, it's sad, man. I mean, uh, you never want to see somebody in her state of mind. Uh, and it was the same thing with Matt Hardy, and people on my Facebook page were saying, you know, it's not, it's not fair to, I was actually saying, I mean, people make jokes, and, and you can make jokes, I understand that, people are going to make jokes and, and things like that, but put yourself in her shoes, and, you know, I think she wants to get help, uh, because she's gotten help before, and she stayed clean, but it's a sad, it's just a sad situation, man, to see somebody like that, and, and, you know, fall that far from, from where they were, and, uh, I, I mean, hopefully she gets herself better. I mean, you, you can both relate to that, buddy. So, uh, ain't nobody oh, yeah. pointing fingers and judging. Just hope, or, hope she gets better. That's all you can do. Take it from a former addict, man. Me and Boone both, both man, have, have, yeah. ha have had our, our I'm problems. I'm still battling it. Everybody knows it's a secret. Yeah, Boone, Boone battles it to this day, man. And I've been clean for, for a while it's now. It's the and hardest thing I've ever had to do. It yeah. is, yeah. I mean, it, uh, I mean, drugs will... Uh, addiction is a bitch. And people who have, who have never been addicted... Uh, they don't realize how hard addiction, and everybody says, well, why'd you start doing drugs in the first place? And it's not, listen, man, you, you it's, Well, I got injured. You, my, I mean, I had a very yeah. serious back, broken back, and I was prescribed it, and then next thing you know, I'm doing more than the dosage that's required. Right, and, right. Before you know it, you need it, you don't want it. I mean, I, I don't consider alcohol or marijuana, you know, hardcore drugs or anything like that, but you get into the... the you get the, real bad on alcohol. Yeah, you get into the pills and you get into the heroin, and and the heroin is is the new thing now. I mean, everybody. It seems like this. It, it, this well, is, it's not the new thing, but it's come back in style. I you know, mean, it is. Uh, it is so sad to see people on heroin, and, and and they can't get off it. And the meth, the meth is is another thing. I mean, you you see meth people, and their bodies just go to shit, man. And and they go from yeah. looking like a, a twenty year old to a fifty year old in a matter of weeks. You know what I mean? It's just. It's brutal. Addiction Maybe is a bitch. Weak, yeah, you the age yeah. Work, yeah, yeah, yeah. Addiction is a uh, is is just a bitch, man. So hopefully uh, China China gets herself better yeah. soon. It takes your soul and consumes your life. <coughs> That's what it does. And right now, it's still got her. Hopefully now she gets out, man. Now let's talk about two announcements last week within about ten minutes of each other. Um, they had the upfront, which is a yearly thing where all the networks come to wherever they. It was in New York City this year. All the networks come and Camp they Punk went for WWE. Right. They they bring all their their top talents, you know, um, what is it, the uh, the X Factor, they had Britney Spears,
Spears and Demi Lovato and all, all the top stars, CM Punk, like you said, for WWE. And they go down to the upfront promotion. TNA was there. Dix, Dixie Carter was there. Um, and, and basically, WWE came out and announced that they are going to three hours on a weekly basis starting in July. It's going to be their uh, their one oh, their one thousand one. I can't say this, dude. I tried it with my sister the other day. One thousandth. One thousandth. That is, I can't, I, I, whatever. Anyways. Finish it. What's that? One thousandth what? One thousandth raw. <laughs> so, okay, so it'll be the one thousandth raw. One thousandth raw. I, it doesn't. Yeah, one thousandth raw. Doesn't fucking come out, bro. One thousandth. One thousandth raw. It doesn't yeah, come out. Right. No, it's it, there's an S that goes on the. I can't get the T and the S together. One thousand. There's no T. No. It's the H. One thousand raw. Yeah, I can't. There's an S on there. One one thousand. Get the fuck out of here. Anyways, they're gonna no, stuff. No S. I know there's not an S, but I add an S on when I say it. One thousand. Oh, okay. I, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> so New York bullshit. The one zero 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 raw. In July, <laughs> all right. That's gonna be. That's hundred roll, by the way. One zero zero zero. Right? I, that's what I said. One zero zero zero. Raw. No, I heard two zero. You're wrong. So, anyways, so in in July they're gonna start doing this, and as of <laughs> as of right now, bro, I'm gonna practice, man. I'm gonna come back next week. I'm gonna have it, Dino. I'll have it for You'll you next it. week. I get. I guarantee. I'm gonna practice that. Um. So, anyways. As of right now, it looks like a pre-show, all right, uh, from 8 to 9 Eastern time, and then the normal 9 to 11 Ooh. Eastern time. Looks like a pre-show, dude. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna air uh, hype. Do we have what? Okay. What? I was going to say, do we have any idea what's going to be in the pre-show? Is it going to be live matches that just, I mean, what, 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 what are the pre-show, co pre-show co video packages, interviews? I, I think so. Uh, as, as of right now, dude, they're going to do a pre-show. It's going to be like a lead-in where you're going to have hype videos, you know, from the previous week's uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, I don't think we're going to have wrestling. There may be a matcher here where they'll like cut the it. thing they do before pay-per-views? Yeah, something like that. But it may be live. Like, they'll have live cut-ins to the arena with Jerry Lawler and, yeah. and Michael Cole. And there may be a match, you know, here and there. But it's basically going to be yeah, a lead-in. Basically, like, hyping up the show and then maybe a match. And then the, the real wall begins. Exactly, exactly. That's the plan as of right now. But, I mean, you got till July, and that's going to change numerous times between now and then. So... We'll have to wait it out. Every week they're going to do that? Every week. Raw's going to three hours permanently, man. Oh, my God. Permanently. That's it, man. So, looks like we're going to have a pre-show. I pre can't show. do two hours. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I, I, I'm i pretty sure it's going to be a pre-show, you know, just to hype it up and try to improve ratings and things like that. Uh, and then, about five or ten minutes after that, uh, or before that, I don't know who had it first, but Dixie Carter came out and uh, put a link up to ImpactWrestling.com. TNA is going live. Every Thursday night, man. They're also gonna move. I like. They're I also, like that idea. Yeah, they're also gonna move uh, time slots from eight to ten Eastern time instead of nine to eleven Eastern time. We're going eight to ten from now on. I like that, man. I like the fact that they're gonna move it up to eight o'clock Eastern time. Everybody's been saying TNA gotta go live, gotta go live, and now what you know. What day of the week? It's Thursday still. Okay, so eight to ten. When does Bellator start? Cause maybe they're moving it around so that Bellator has a lead in starting at ten. When does Bellator? Oh, yeah, Bellator's going to be on play, I thought, so. I thought the Bella Twins, a tour. No, Bellator. I got gotcha. you. Never mind. Yeah, the MMA company. Yeah, so, I got gotcha. you. I, I thought you were talking about a Bella Twins tour or something like that. Bellator, no, I got gotcha. you. No, no, the Bella Tour uh, Fighting Championship. They're going to be launching on Spike. Maybe they're moving DNA 8 to 10 so that Bellator has a 10 o'clock lead in. And if King Mo's going to be doing both, they got the crossover guy. It, it's smart business. No, it is. Ball used to lead into the Ultimate Fighter for UFC back in the very early UFC days. Oh, it's definitely smart business, man. Um, and yeah, and you, it you know what? Everybody's gonna say now Impact needs to get out of the Impact Zone. You know what I mean? TNA needs to get out of Orlando, and that's that's true. They do, but there's a lot of money that goes into that. People don't realize, say, man. You know, the, the, the production costs are gonna are gonna skyrocket going live as it is. You don't want them to start moving and touring with the TV. Like, leave home base. It's free. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, for admission, you know, I guess you don't make any money off ticket sales, but the production costs are going up, going live. You can only do so much. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, maybe so. And, and production trucks and everything. I think live, going live is a big step. And I'll tell you right now, man, there are times on, on Thursday night where I don't tune into Impact. But the fact that it's going live every. I mean, everybody loves. Live radio, live TV. And as much as we don't like to see it, it's kind of like you're waiting. 
for something to fuck up, whether it be on live radio. Yeah. Are, are you they never gonna, know what can yeah. happen on a live show. They can, are, they can, anything can happen. Are they going to screw up? Anything can happen, man. And the fact that they're going live every Thursday night, I'm going to tune in every single week, man. And there's times where I skip you know the impact. I will, I'll tune in for the first one or two to see if there's any noticeable difference. You know, either myself. That's what I'm saying, man. To, to Just to tune in because it's live. And I, I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, impact ratings are going to go from a 1.0 to a 1.5. They're yeah. not, man. They may or go up the to... show will drastically hey. change. It's not going to be like a whole completely different no. show. But it, I mean, it, it'll be, have a different dynamic to it. Mm. And not only that, but... The same way the Ultimate Fighter. The Ultimate Fighter used to have tape fight, and then they switched to live fights. And it just made it like, oh, well, now we got to watch because we don't... Anything can happen in this fight. It's live. Yo, Mountain Dew is so good, bro. Oh, I love it. That's what I was just drinking. No. Oh. Oh, man, I love Mountain Dew. It's so good, man. It's so good. Anyways, um, so that's what's going on. We're gonna, uh, Raw's going to three hours. Impact's going two hours. I'm going to check it out. You're going to check it out. And I think we're going to see ratings go up a little bit. Maybe a 1.2, some, somewhere around there. Maybe a 1.3. You know, but, but nothing huge. And, and build off of it, you know? Before we get to the calls, let's get to MMA unboxing out of the way. Have you seen any of the episodes? I think there's only been one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're going to do one more story. All right, and then we're gonna get into okay. Strike Force, and then we'll take uh, live phone calls. And okay, I know, you, I know you're interested in this one, man. Ric Flair, bro. Ric Flair Ooh. has apparently quit TNA. Um, here's the deal. Now what's the story? He Hook no, he no showed a couple TNA live events last weekend, and we put that up on the website yeah. that that Flair wasn't there, and you know that led to people thinking, well, maybe there's an issue if he was advertised for a live event. Uh, what's the deal? He has not showed up. He didn't show up to those live events, and he didn't show up to the Impact taping. Over the past couple of weeks, um, Dixie Carter and TNA have tried to smooth things over with Ric Flair, and to no avail. Um, and, you know, there are rumblings that, you know, Flair may sign with WWE under a Legends-type deal with the WWE Network upcoming. I mean, they're not going to go, WWE is not going to let Ric Flair go out there and wrestle. No way. Not after they did the Hall of Fame. He could be a manager or a mouthpiece right. or somebody. Uh, you know, he could do they, the he could do I, like I find it, I find it awfully funny, my man. The Ric Flair goes over not more than two months ago for WrestleMania Hall at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. At the Hall of Fame, right? And there was supposed to be a deal between WWE and TNA. I find it, it's not, I don't think it's a coincidence, my man, <laughs> that, you know, Rick went over. And you know damn well that when Rick went for WrestleMania weekend, there were WWE the management. Rick. They all the at some point. Rick, they, look, they, 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 yeah. Why don't you go over here and be a manager you for damn every right. guy like, well, let's get you back in the big show. That's right. That's right. Somebody got you in his Rick ear. Rick Mark, so he's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Let's do that. Somebody, somebody got in his ear uh, at WrestleMania time, man, and and now he is, you know, uh, up and quit uh, TNA. Now, as far as TNA is concerned, they're saying that we have, you know, done everything for this guy. This guy has wanted money fronted to him, basically before he is supposed to be paid. Uh, they give him money in advance. Um, there he are also times that he used to do that in WWE a lot. Too. Right. Do, there are, uh, his house show payoff stuff. Early. There. To, you know. There are people that claim that Rick goes into bars and then when it comes time to pay the bill, he doesn't have the money to pay for it. And other well, people. That's what he does. That's when he gets an advance from the office to pay for right. his bar tab. And and, and, you know. and and everybody, you know, they wind up paying for it. I was telling somebody, this is Rick fucking Flair. This is Rick. Yeah, the man wants a couple bucks. You better give him a couple bucks. No, 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 no. This is Rick Flair. If the man wants a couple bucks, why the fuck does the man need? This is Rick Flair, bro. Millions. Of, this dude has made millions and millions of dollars over his career. This dude's hey, like seventy years old. TNA and the man wants a couple bucks. Give him a couple. Keep the man happy. Yeah. Why not? I, there's no excuse for it, dude. I know. I understand the there's guy. No excuse. No, it's, no, 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 no. It's shitty behavior, but no, no, no. This guy spends money like it's fucking water, bro. He doesn't care. That's what he's he's famous what's, for, bro. What's, what's he got? Like, well, then it's not TNA's problem. If that's what you're famous for, then deal with the consequences. If you can't pay your bar tab, don't come crying to me. Oh, I can't pay my bar tab. You shut the fuck up. You, you, you used to be a millionaire, bro. Don't come crying to TNA when it comes you time know, to pay. He knows, though, man. I'm telling you, if you know Rick Flair, that's what he's famous for. He's always done that. So, well, you know, even if he's got, and first of all, he's not, he's not as rich as you think. He's had, how many, what, four or five divorces. He's had. 
how many lawsuits. He's he spent money on crazy amounts of clothes, Bro, and airplanes, come and cars on. that he doesn't need, vacations. Bro, he, he's, uh, he's not as rich as you think. I, I show no remorse for this dude whatsoever. You were a multi You're to too you much to me, I think. No, no, no. You problem. were a multi-millionaire, Rick. Rick. Yeah. You, Rick, you were a multi-millionaire. A multi-million If I was a million, I don't I don't know if I could ever go through a million dollars in my lifetime. But I'm I'm not a crazy spender like Rick. I understand that Rick, Flett, you know, he's a hard partying guy. He likes the girls. He's been through divorces. He doesn't get prenups, so he owes the wife thousands of dollars on a monthly basis and he's got like 10 wives and tons of kids all over the place. This that and the other thing. You got yourself into it. Get yourself out of it, motherfucker. You were a multi-million Dollar superstar at one he point. He's getting himself out of it. He's, he's going to not. For money. If, if they don't hey. say no, then he got himself out of it. So they, what do you, if hey, he, if he they have a beef with how he got hey. out of it, but he got out of it. If you say, if, if TNA says no, it's not worth it, bro. It, it, from TNA standpoint, from TNA standpoint, ratings haven't gone up with him, Hogan, Sting, anybody else, right? It's no. one, it's one Nobody's less thing. Move the needle like it's, that. It's, it's, it's a, a slow thing, but with Rick Flair. The story here, and we're getting off track, is that he quit TNA. Yeah. And, okay, is he going to turn up in WWE? I'm sure it's not official yet, but, okay, he's not going to not be in the wrestling business. If he's not in TNA anymore, what else is he going to do? Go to ROH again? I don't think so. He's coming back. The, uh, the, yeah, I, I understand. He'll come back and, and probably sign a Legends deal or, or something like that. And then it's WWE's case. I mean, I guarantee if he goes up to Vince McMahon and says, hey, man, can you front me the money, blah, blah, blah. Vince is no, going to get – Vince is going to – Vince, Listen to his Hall of Fame speech. He said it straight up in his Hall of Fame speech. He was like, I forget who it was, the guy that handles the payoff on the road. Hey. He would say, sorry for hitting you up too many times, but, uh, you know, the Nates runs up above. He said it in his Hall of Fame speech. This is in WWE now. Brother. Not the, the recent one. You, you can do that uh, a certain amount of times, and I guarantee you Vince is going to get tired of it real quick. And I guarantee you that TNA, nah. TNA's been tired of it real quick, man. TNA said, fuck it. It's not worth keeping How them around. A, bar a couple hundred bucks. It's not a big deal. It's the, more, it's the point, bro. It's the point of the story. This is, this is, get, I'm not agreeing. I'm agreeing it's wrong. But right. it is what it is. He does it, and he does do it in WWE. It's not just because it's TNA. Uh, you, now, yo, yo, listen. Let me, let, me tell, let me tell the people in the chat room. Matt Boone, Matt Boone, for his entire life, has always been a mark for Ric Flair. Always. You're a Ric Flair mark. You That's love the right. dude. You love the dude. Ric Flair this, Ric Flair that. And you're defending this motherfucker when he's a multi- I'm I don't give a fuck. Right, I'm, saying, I'm saying it's not right, but he gets away with it. He gets away with it, but I guarantee you, in WWE, he may get away with it a couple times, man, but eventually that's, that's going to piss some people off in WWE, just like it did in TNA. They're going to get sick and tired of it and say, fuck it, man. You're not worth our time, dude. you got to learn, man. Grow up, bro. He's not a teenager, bro. He's not a 20-year-old kid. He's fucking 70 years man, old, and he shouldn't be doing it. This is a sensitive issue for you. I see why you're getting all hyper. But first of all, have I hit you up once this month? I don't think so. No, because you know not to. I'm because I, job, and, and, I'm doing my yo, job so good, yo, uh, wait, a wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, yo, so wait a minute, dude. You know, okay, oh, yeah. wait. You want to bring that up? You want to bring that up live on air? Check this out, man. Boone would hit me up yeah. for advance money. He he hit me up for advance. Yo, please, dude. Please, bro. Can can I get it before the first? And finally, I said, Boone. I'm telling you right now, no I've done this, I've done this 10, 15, 20, 30, I've done this 2,000 fucking times for you, and I'm done, I am done with it, and you know what, if you, and, 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 and if you ask me again, I said to you, I point blank said to you, if you ask me again, I will not hesitate, I will fire your fucking ass, and you know what? You yeah. haven't, you haven't asked me, have you? Haven't asked haven't me, bro. Asked and it's the, s- and it's, and it's, and it's the same, it's the same thing. We don't have to talk about it on live air, but you know what happens with me in my real job? How I got money, I'll pay cut in half or whatever. I might need you to pay me on a different day, yeah. uh, so that I haven't. Like I need you to pay me on the twentieth from now on, basically is what I'm saying. Yo, listen, it's the same situation with Ric Flair and TNA, where TNA finally. Put down the fucking hammer and said, you know what? We're done. We're not going to front you this money. We're not doing it. And I did the same. I said, I'm not going to give you the fucking money, dude. I'm not fronting it to you. I don't give a shit. And there you go, bro. That's the exact same thing that's happened with Ric Flair and TNA. And it's going to happen in WWE, too. Because people are going to get sick and tired of it. No. And say, enough yeah. is enough. He's done it a million times in WWE before. He, got, he was just fine. Not a big deal. 
Saturday. Come on, let me ask the people to Best chat. Sport. Let me ask the people to chat, dude. Yeah. Yo. We got some calls in here, man. What are we doing? All right, yo. Fuck, fuck. Strike force this Rick, past weekend. What do you think? We got Gilbert Melendez and Josh Thompson, the trilogy. I thought it was a great fight. What do you think? Did, did Josh Thompson get robbed? Uh, no, dude. Melendez won that. I thought you were saying during the show Thompson got robbed. No, I said Melendez won that, dude. It was clear. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't like. Uh, I don't like. Um, uh, Josh Thompson, dude. I just. I don't think he's. I, do. I, I don't know, man. I don't. I haven't seen enough of him. You know what he I mean? Was killing him those last two rounds, but uh, yeah. yeah. What do you think of the main event? Daniel Cormier and uh, Josh Barnett. Oh Jesus Christ! It sounds like crap. Fuck that man. No sympathy whatsoever for that man. No sympathy whatsoever from that man. I don't know your point on that. All right, Eddie. Daniel Cormier, future UFC heavyweight champion, yes or no? Daniel Cormier is yes. the future UFC heavyweight champion. Yes, 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 yes. He looked great, man. He looked yes. awesome. I, I think so, too. Uh, Pacquiao versus Timothy Bradley, HBO 24-7. Have you seen any of them yet? I haven't seen any of them, but, uh, you know, Timothy Bradley's a, a good fighter, man. Uh, I just don't think he defeats Pacquiao. Sorry, not having it. I don't either. He's undefeated three times here. I don't think he beats him either. Uh, two other quick things. Hmm? Prime time near Dos Santos. They've had two episodes. You have seen neither one of them, have you? I haven't seen them. Uh, you gotta watch those. It makes the fight exciting. And uh, predictions for Yo, the weekend says, UFC. Frank says, Mir versus Junior Dos Santos. Who are you picking? He says, you gotta watch the prime time, Ryan, dude. They're awesome, man. You gotta watch them yet. The motherfucker doesn't know that UFC pay-per-view is coming up this Saturday night. Get out of here. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, 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 I guess, yeah, the last one would be Friday and then the show would be Saturday. All right, but I figured they'd have a week between. But either way, Frank Mir versus Junior Dos Santos. Who are you picking? Uh, Dos Santos. And Cain Velasquez versus Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Who are you picking? Velasquez. All right, I'm agreeing with both of those picks. So I can have any arguments there. No betting. There you go. No betting on Saturday no night. No gambling. No we'll gambling. See, we'll see what happens. You get a couple beers with me, dude. I may, uh, I may go for the gamble. You know what I mean? Change your mind. Yeah. It happens. Anyways, ah. Oh. Fucking Rick fucking, fucking Ric Flair, man. Fucking Ric Flair. <laughs> Caller, you're live on WZO Radio. What's up? Rumble Foreskin, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Well, I gotta say, Ryan Clark, that was one hell of a fucking shoot, my friend. Yeah? You like that, man? Yeah, that oh shit. my god, I felt the passion, my heart was racing, I wanted to hear what you were saying. <laughs> you, what do you shot think? Shot on Boone, shot on Flair, and that, that, that was... Perfect, 100% perfect. What, uh, it's easy for those with to criticize those without. <laughs> exactly. That's how I see it. Well, what about, what, what do you think about Ric Flair and, and, you know, dude being, you know, making millions of dollars and, dude, I mean, it's a hard party. Of it's wrong. Yeah, but I don't you know. know. I, I'm a huge Ric Flair, Mark, but I, I'm kind of done with the shit, too. <laughs> if you ain't showing up to the TV shows to entertain me, then why the fuck should I give a shit? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a different that's argument. It. I agree with that, too. Ric Flair is still one of the best on the mic. He's for 62 years old. I hate to say it, but he can still do a street fight type thing. But you know what? If you ain't going to entertain me, I don't give a shit. I'm <laughs> over it. There you go. I'm gone. On, on to the young talent. That's what I, I mean. Listen, I got no problem with Ric Flair. You know, like you said, dude, one of the best promo cutters in the business ever, man. You know what I mean? Oh. Great, great worker, no. great worker Rumble. back in his day. It's just, it's just. I mean, that's a completely, oh. that's a different subject. You know what I mean? But I, mean, I got no problems oh. with this. Why, why, Boone? Oh, Rumble Foreskin's full of shit. If he came to WWE and cut a great promo, he'd be marking out like everybody else. He's no, he, he, he just, you know, no, I, he no, just. Like I said, I'm a mark, and there'll always be that one side of me that will mark you're out. You're done with him. But at the same time, if he's just jumping shit back, like, if he goes to WWE and all these WWE marks who've been hating on him in TNA, all of a sudden switch mine and say, oh, I love Ric Flair now. I love him. He's God. Of he's course. God. And you then, know they're gonna. You know they're gonna, you oh, know? They, they already are. I'm, yeah. I'm reading some of it. Yeah, like, but uh, before you guys hang up on me, you missed another piece of big news with Alex Shelley jumping ship. 
Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, Alex, I'll tell you what, dude. Alex Shelley is a uh, is a big loss for. Thanks for the uh, call, Rumpel Foreskin. Um, by the way, I want to read something because um, our our guy Chris Boone. I'll read it at the end of the show. Um, but our oh, guy, yeah, you showed me that email. Yeah, that, that's another touching one. Man. Yeah. We love that guy. Yeah, I want to uh, I want to read that to you at the end. Remind me to do that. Um, but don't at, read it at the end. That's like a sour note to go on. That's like a sad thing to end the show on. You don't want to end on a sad note. All right. Well, Rumpel Foreskin just uh, called. To, so, ugh, I got a um, I got another email, and um, I'll just read bits and uh, oh my God, look at all this, look at all this emails. Good Lord, um, I got another email, and basically he says um, for those that don't know, this is a guy. He's a uh, a, a diehard WZR radio fan and and listener of the show, and uh, he's dealing with some personal problems. He um, he's got cancer, and uh, he just basically sent us an email to thank us, and um. You know, it's just, I, I feel so bad for, for, for the guy. He's been through so much, man. And, uh, you know, he listens to the show on a weekly basis, and he says that it helps him get, get through his week. Um, he just wanted to, uh, to say, you know, just wanted to pass uh, this message along to you and thank you and Boone personally for the heartfelt shout-out you gave, um, as well as the WZR Army gave me on last on the last episode of WZR Radio, dedicating valuable airtime towards telling my story and showing your support was, without a doubt, the highlight of my week. My week has been filled with doctor visits, blood testing, PET scans, etc. Um, he says, but I'm keeping up my positivity through all of this. The amazing support of my family, friends, girlfriend, and the devoted WZR Army is very humbling. Dino UK, Punker, RKO408, Rumple Foreskin, Misfit1, legend killer and you and me uh boone i can't thank everyone enough i just wish uh you know i but i listen i read and i appreciate and enjoy the sincere comments everybody has given me another positive through all of this is that i'm canadian and while this whole miserable process may be physically mentally and emotionally demanding it ain't costing me a, a, a penny. So, uh, just best of wish, best wishes to uh, Chris, dude. We uh, we love we, we love you, man. Keep fighting the good fight. We hope you pull through, and uh, we'll keep trying to do our best to entertain you. We'll keep everybody updated on your status as long as you keep us updated, and uh, we're fighting with you, brother. We're on your side. Eggs, I couldn't have said it better, man. We're gonna get you a uh, a t-shirt in the mail. I've got your address, and uh, as soon as I send booms out. As soon as I, uh, yeah, you want a soda too, I'll send you two bucks. Uh, as soon as, uh, you, you know, and when, when I send Boone's t-shirt, I'm going to get one out to you. You guys will be the first ones to get them, and uh, we'll take care of you, man. And uh, like yeah, yeah, Make sure to autograph it for him, too. He wants an autograph. Yeah, we'll take care of you, man. We'll get it out in the mail for you. So, and we're all here, dude. If you ever, you know, if you ever come in and, and you can catch a live radio show, everybody's here in the chat room. I see all these comments in the chat room right now from all these guys, and they basically, you know, wishing you the, wishing you the best, dude. So, hopefully you pull through, and yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what condition he's in, but if he's ever able to call, that would be great for him to call in so we could talk to him and uh, wish him well in person. Right, exactly, man. So keep that head up, brother, and uh, we Jackie, love... Jackie, we'd love to hear from you, too. Jackie. Oh, yeah, Jackie. You know what I mean? Let's get Jackie back. What Come happened? on now. Jackie, Come on. We miss you, Jack. Right? Where are you, man? What, what happened here? Yeah. Um, so, let's... uh. Let's say, oh, Alex Shelley, dude. Uh, that's a big loss for TNA with uh, Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, Chris Saban. Chris Saban had just... They were just bringing that tag team back, weren't they? they? Well, Chris was out with an injury. And, um, you know, he, he just came back and they were about to bring him back. And basically the deal is uh, Alex Shelley's contract is about to expire and he has opted not to renew. Uh, he's one of many in TNA that are pissed off with Hulk Hogan being there. Um, and, and trust me, man, he's one of many people... I mean, a lot of guys want Hogan out, and it seems like Dixie Carter, I mean, she came out with that interview today and basically praised him and said that, you know, he gets a lot of unfair criticism. Um, she's just, you know, people said it best, she's drinking the Kool-Aid, man, for, uh, for Hulk yeah. Hogan, you know, and, she's you know, what is, she's it, what is it going to take, man? I mean, Flair, Flair was kind of a, uh, you know, he was kind of a, he's, he's just a, he's just a, you know, when when people cause issues and they're not drawing ratings, it's time to get rid of him. And uh, you know, I think Hogan Hogan needs to go. You know, Hogan well, needs to go. Well, especially when the price tag is as high as Flair is and he's no show and this and that. But uh, what what was that number Shane Douglas revealed that TNA or Dixie Carter is in the black? Like, how much money has she lost or in the red? Whatever. I don't remember. Thirty million or something it like was, that. I thought it was hundreds of millions. No. 
I thought it was thirty million somewhere around there. Somebody in the chat. Thirty million. Somebody in the chat room oh. will 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 come up with it. She came out early. That's not too bad for a business on TV with live events and, and things like that. So, but if it gets to the hundred, then you're like, all right, well, guys, we gotta. We're gonna. This company's gonna be gone soon. There like, was it. Somebody in, somebody in the chat room says, uh, who is it? Uh, Th Jesse two thousand six. 140, 150 million. You may be right. I, I heard 100. I, I heard 150, 200 million, and that's like dangerously a lot of money. Like that's the point where you might be like, this company might not be around so much longer. Things all start changing. Yeah, but they also Panda Energy is also an oil company, bro. If you're in the I oil, know, but you if, can only lose so much. Oh no, I know. So long. I, mean, yeah, I understand. I understand. Stuff that. like going live, that could be like a last ditch effort to try and turn things around. If it doesn't work, to, you know, you never know. You never that's, know where they're going, man. Uh, that's what I was thinking, man. The uh, the live thing. I mean. Obviously, they're they're trying all this new stuff with uh, social media, and you know, putting their pay per views online for people to, you know, you can watch the uh, well, TMZ idea. Well, you can watch the first two minutes of uh, TNA Sacrifice, and then after the first two minutes, you have the opportunity to buy it. Things like that. You know what I mean? They're yeah. um, you know, they're going about it um in a in a different way, trying to trying to do things to get more promotion and and publicity and things like that. Here's somebody we haven't had in a while. Wow. Callie, what's okay, going on? Fire or no? Callie, what's up, man? Hey, what's Callie, man? Uh, a quick question. Since you're talking about uh, Shelly, you know, how, how, what, what, what's the like morale? You think of Morgan leaving too, and Flair and Shelly, and maybe even Saban? We think the morale is you think backstage, not not of Hogan, but of wrestlers shooting to leave TNA for WWE. Um, well, as far as Matt Morgan, I, I mean, uh, Matt Morgan, Alex Shelley are, are mid-card guys as much as, you know, a lot of us. I mean, Alex Shelley's got all the potential in the world, man, and they just never gave the guy the ball, you know. I mean, they they always kept him in a tag team, you know, pretty much in T. I I know he's had singles runs here and there in TNA, but they've never really given him the ball. And, you know, everybody says, well, Alex Shelley's going to WWE. This is awesome, man. WWE's picking up Alex Shelley. Yo, listen, you guys know damn well that if Alex Shelley goes over to WWE, they're going to make him change up his style, unless he does the Cruiserweight show over on the WWE Network, which is possible. But they're going to kill him, man. Yeah, he's, a, yeah. he's, a, he's an ex-TNA talent, number one. He's not. He doesn't work a WWE style of wrestling, and you know they may not bring that to the cruiserweight show, so they may let him go out there and do his thing. But it's never going to be pushed to the top in WWE. I just don't. I, I don't think Alex Shelley is going to become a, a top star. I think Alex Shelley is going to become more of a, a jobber in in WWE. So I, you know, I, we've seen it in the past with TNA guys coming over to. Um, well, you can't really is say that. Is that where show is going for sure? Well, WWE? you can't really say that. I mean, we've got CM Punk and Daniel Bryan who are top stars in WWE now, but it takes a while. It takes a while to get there. Uh, it well, looks like... he could go to Ring of Honor or Dragon Gate, but it's known that he's going to WWE. Is that already official? No, it's not official. Uh, your your guy, okay. Mark, your guy, Mark Madden, came out and was like, he's WWE bound. He, he sent out a tweet or something like that. But I think he got that okay. from he okay. got well, he got that from the internet reports that went up on the internet. You know, saying, you know, Alex Shelley's probably going to head to WWE for the cruiserweight show, uh, which is possible. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I think if he yeah. goes to WWE, he's just going to turn into a mid card guy. Unless they feature him on the cruiserweight show, then. I don't think there'll be any problems, and he'll be able to shine there with, you know, his in-ring style and things like that. But as far as, you know, on main television, I, I don't know. I don't think uh, – uh, we'll see. Well, you never know, man. It, it all depends on who they want to push. Do they want to push him or do they not want to push him? If they push him, well, the guy if, – dude, if they push him, he's got all the potential in the world. On the microphone, in-ring, obviously, he's got all the potential. But if they, He's not a big guy, but, yeah, that's the only thing he's got going against him. It's like oh, it's yeah, you know, it's like Alex Riley too, bro. Alex Riley's the same thing, dude. He's got he's great on the mic. He's decent in ring. Uh, but push the dude. Give the guy a chance. You know what I mean? If they don't give the guy a chance, there's nothing these guys can do. All he needs is one chance. Just give the guy a chance, please. <laughs> All right, you guys can uh, call us right now. It's five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero. Give us a call right now. Lots of people in the chat. About 80 people in there this week. WZROnline.com. Rapid fire. Let's do some of those. Uh, rapid fire. Yeah, no doubt. Let me, uh, while well, we wait for phone calls to come in here, go to my Facebook page. Let me load this up. All right. Um, rapid fire. Here we go. Jesse Young, if Alex Shelley leaves, where does that leave Chris Sabin? 
Well, unless Saban decides that. I mean, Saban's probably under contract with TNA, so it's not like he can jump ship. He's got to wait for his contract to expire. Um, and I don't know when that is, but we'll see if... Uh, he'll work Saban... without Shelly plenty of times. He'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be all right if he stays in TNA. Christopher Brown, I've got a question pertaining to the three-hour Raw. Now that it'll be permanent, what happens to the special three-hour Raws from the past? Well... Every Raw is going to be three hours now. no longer special. Yeah, there's not yeah. going to be a special four-hour Raw. That's no, 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 no. No, it's not going to be four hours. No way. Yeah, I mean, it'll just be a, a weekly three-hour Raw program. Uh, Matthew Pringle, any plans on releasing a smartphone app or mobile version of the sites? WZROnline.com is going to have one um, here in the next couple of months. We started to work on it, and then uh, we ran into some problems. So we'll get back on that. A little um, more complicated than you think. Yeah. It's a lot more complicated than you think. Uh, Sergio... Cardenas, uh, thoughts on Nick Diaz being suspended for one year when Overeem got popped for the HGH and only nine months suspension. You think uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission sticked it to Diaz because he is suing them? Oh, yeah, I would absolutely think that. I mean, he got popped for uh, marijuana and decided to sue or whatever. Um, for, uh, for but, yeah, it, it probably a fuck you kind of thing. Well, his point is we Diaz. His, well, his point is Diaz got busted for marijuana, and here Overeem got popped for HDH, and Diaz gets a, a longer suspension. You know what I mean? Doesn't? Yeah, yeah, Overeem didn't get popped for HDH. He didn't fail a drug test. He just had uh, way too high testosterone levels, which is a completely different thing. It's very complicated, but yeah, I, I understand what he's saying. Uh, Aaron Spice. What are the chances of Matt Morgan back in WWE? Very, very likely. Probably sooner than later. Uh, yeah, I was just watching, like I said, tough enough too. I think Matt Morgan was on there, and he was much fatter, by the way. Not fat, fat, like just much bigger and bulkier. Yeah, more. Barely recognized. Morgan will be in TNA uh, sooner than later. Uh, Sergio again, John Jones, DWI or DUI. Dana White getting lots of flack on Twitter for not punishing him, but firing Miguel Torres for Twitter comments he made. Uh, well, John Jones is obviously a much bigger star, and of course, well, there's going to be Miguel there's going to be some... made comments. Well, Miguel Torres made jokes about rape. Uh, John Jones had a DUI. There's a big difference. Huge difference. You're right. And and Jones came out and issued an apology on his Facebook, and that was that was stupid, man. He came out and he said, you know, I messed up, blah, 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 blah. I got a DWI, DUI. It won't happen again. And then, you know, media started picking it up, like TMZ and everybody else started picking it, and he deleted it. Now... I understand that if you get popped and everybody's asking questions, well, what happened? What happened? Blah 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 blah. You gotta keep your mouth shut, man, because you can come out That's and you. That's probably what happened. If, he made a tweet yeah. and Dana White said, "Get that shit off of there. We don't want people no, to it's, keep this story. You well, don't die away unless you keep feeding it." No, it's it's not that. The dude goes out there and he says, "Okay, yeah, I, I admit it. I I fucked up." The dude's got a court case for this thing coming up, and they're gonna bring this as evidence and say, "Well, you uh, yeah, you point, you, ad, you admitted right here on Facebook. We've got a post from you that says that you admitted yeah. doing it." And then he's got no defense. He says, "Well, uh, 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 what?" We'll find out that soon we'll find out that John Jones' Twitter was hacked, as they always are. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it too, man. Uh, Mudge Man Mia, who is the worst dressed wrestler in WWE, as far as gimmick is concerned? Uh, Ryan Clark. I'm not in WWE. Oh, okay. You know, I thought you said who was the worst wrestling fan in the history of wrestling. The worst. I was gonna say right. But. The worst dressed wrestler in. Uh, in WWE, I don't know. I, come on, probably Layla, uh, one of the divas. Who knows? I I don't know. I I have to think yeah, about that. I'd have to go through the roster. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe Great Khali. I don't see him have any five stars. Uh, J- J- Jerry Lawler. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I have no idea. Brodus Clay. Brodus Clay. <laughs> that's another one. Call you live on WZR Radio. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? So, buddy? Pretty good. Hey, um, just got a, a boxing question for you guys. I don't know if you heard the news this weekend, but there was another fight that got canceled because somebody got popped for steroids. It was the, um, uh, Victor Ortiz, Andre Berto. They were supposed to have a rematch, but Berto tested positive for steroids. No, uh, no way, did, did he? That. Wow. Also, after, I'll just say, no, I didn't hear that. And Ryan, if you know more, talk about it. But I also want to hear the story you were talking about on Facebook about a guy that was supposed to be on Friday Night Fights, I think local in your area, and then he got shot or jumped or something before the fight and he couldn't do it. Well, Friday Night Fights aired from Albany uh, this past Friday night. Okay, well, maybe maybe it was a WGR listener that was telling me on my I remember somebody saying, 
Uh, the guy was supposed to be on Friday Night Fight, he did a title fight, and he couldn't do it. Like, the day of the fight, he got jumped, and, like, just got the living shit kicked out of him outside. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, I, I remember know. hearing that. So maybe somebody could call us. I don't know. I know I heard that story somewhere. Uh, Michael Dugan, Duggan, will Ambrose be debuting next Thank week? You. And what is your thoughts on Rollins being on NXT? The Revolution thing, it doesn't appear right now to be a uh, town. Uh, they could change this over the next week. You just never know, man. Uh, but as of right now, it's for a, uh, a video game that WWE is going to do. So uh, Ambrose, man. as far as as far as uh, WWE debut, uh, fairly soon for Ambrose. Same thing with uh, Seth. Seth Rollins, although they taped the uh, next season of NXT, so and he's all over that. So, did you, did you see America Got Talent uh, tonight or last night? By the way, I saw it last night. Howard made a seven-year-old boy cry. Oh, and then he went up and hugged him. That, he talked about that a lot on like the Today Show and the View and stuff. Was it funny or, or sad or what? Well, the dude was up there rapping, and Howard <laughs> Howard said something, dude. I don't. I I caught highlights, dude. I didn't see the show. I didn't and watch it. He went it up and hugged him, right? I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. Like, he got up and just went up there on the stage and hugged him because he right. felt bad. And then he changed his mind and said, "All right, fuck it, you're going to Vegas." Exactly. Exactly. Christian. Yeah, he's good on that show. He's real good. Christian Chuma, any update on Sin Cara's return? He was backstage at Raw last night. He was backstage at the SmackDown tapings tonight. It may happen at SmackDown tonight, but it is soon, man. He worked uh, live events this weekend, so he'll be back very, very soon. Very soon. Uh, if not tonight, probably next week. Tommy Hunter, do you think there's any chance that Ric Flair will come back to WWE as a producer or executive in the back? That's possible. Like Boone said earlier, Flair is always going to be in the uh, in the wrestling business, whether they're, you know it's an agent, producer, manager. I just don't think we're going to see him wrestle again in WWE. I think I'll have him on camera. It's probably <coughs> going to take another day, at least at first, you know. Uh, Nathaniel, with Jericho losing in every pay-per-view since his return, do you think this reflects WWE's feelings towards him now mm -hmm. coming and going? No. No, I think it's that he's a big name, and they're trying to, they're really starting a whole new era. They bring guys back, and they use them to build up their guys, like Brock Lesnar. He's only there for a year. I mean, the smart money thing would be to have him kill everybody and make him a big star, but then he's gone, and that doesn't help the business in the future. Uh, thanks for the echo. Uh, can I even talk? What, what are you doing? What? Did you pick up a caller or something? I can't even hear myself. No. <laughs> Keep talking. Uh, we right, hear you. Uh, anyways, but yeah, Jericho is about to take a tour, so he's gonna, they're going to have him put over a bunch of the guys on the way out so that they get the rub. You know, it's just business. Kevin Grogan. I don't any, think they have any. Okay. Kevin Grogan, any news on uh, when the t-shirts will be in soon, man, next couple weeks? Give me, uh, Give me three weeks. And we'll have them all here. Uh, Rob, Saval, can we have a WZR get-together and barbecue and call it the wzr -B -Q? Ah. wzr -B -Q. I like it, but it's a cute name. Ah, it is a good name, man. Uh, hey, listen, I'll take a if, check, if, you guys were, uh, if you guys were all close to me, if everybody lived here in Albany, New York, I would throw you all a huge party, all the food on me, beers, whatever you guys want. We would have a big party at my house. Uh, but... If you're close to New York City, I'll be going down June 26th, I believe it is, and uh, we go to a barbecue. We go to Dallas Barbecue before the uh, Ring of Honor event, and uh, dinner, drinks, sodas, whatever. It's all on me. I'll take care of you guys. Hey, and, everything, uh, if everything's all on you, fly me, and I'm Nick Colos, and we'll have like a big uh, WZR convention, like for Star Trek nerds. If you want to pay, if you want to pay for your plane ticket, no doubt I'll buy your no, dinner. No, 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 <laughs> you fly me, and I say. No, I'm not flying. And listen, I'm already yeah, taking. your show. I, hey, I'm already taking care of dinner and drinks for everybody that comes down to New York City. So oh, I'm not, I'm not paying for so flights too. Convention, so the is a convention. They fly their stars, and they don't make the stars pay for their own tickets to come to the convention. It's, it's your company, WZR Radio. You that is, go. that is the lamest fucking. <laughs> <I just wanna laughs> get out of here, oh, dude. I had to try. Yeah, you're, I had to try. On, you're on vacation right now. Get out of here, dude. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, uh. If you're if you're in the Albany area, if you're around here, sure, hit me up, email, I'll vibe you over, we'll come have a barbecue, come on down. If that's if you're in Albany, New York, come on over, we'll do a barbecue. Hit me up, webmasterprowrestlingscoops.com. If not, if you're close to New York City, come down, Dallas Barbecue before Ring of Honor, I'll buy you dinner, I'll buy you beers, buy you drinks, whatever you guys want. Um, Sodas, yeah, whatever, drinks, right? Yeah. Drinks, you know what I'm saying? Could be anything. Uh, Daniel Medina. When will uh, I'm not reading that to you. Get out of here. Uh, Glenn Whitfield, when is your prediction on when Hulk Hogan will get fired, says quit TNA? By the end of the year, Hogan gets fed up with TNA, and he leaves on his own power. He says, I'm done. I can't make it work. He's part owner. I don't know how sticky a situation it would be for him to just up and leave, but he could sell his stock and make the money. I, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. We'll, um, we'll uh, why did they short Lord Tenzai from James Minor? No idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I don't know what he, he was in, he was in the main event of Raw last night, so they haven't shorted him yet. Um, Jesse Young could Flair come in and manage Ashley Flair? There you go, possibility. Uh, Steve, I don't think he'd, he'd manage Diva, though. Come on, man. Uh, Steve Williams, hey, okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Steve Williams Jr., hey, Ryan Clark and Matt Boone, who is the next big thing coming up from FCW becoming a mega super baby face? I would say maybe Seth Rollins. He's got the list, though, bro. He's got Dean man, Ambrose. Dean Ambrose, but he's talking about a baby face, not a, not a heel. Ambrose. Yeah, I think Ambrose is a, he'll act like a heel, but he'll get over as a face because he's got that CM Punk thing where it's just cool. Like people are like, wow, this is like a creative kind of way to uh, do promos and be an asshole, but it's just cool, you know. Uh, Vincent Nugent, do you think uh, the tag team of Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Rex should have a chance to shine at the WWE main roster? I think anybody that's in WWE should have a chance to shine. Um, you just Especially can't. Especially tag teams, because they don't have many. They don't have many. Yeah. Stand out. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I'd say give them an opportunity, see what they can do with it. Um, champion Luke Gabriel, Travis Hefner. Hafner of the Cleveland Indians just came out to the plate to Triple H's theme against the Detroit Tigers. No doubt. I've heard about that. I get a lot of emails from people coming out to Flair's music, Triple H's music. Happens all the time. Uh, Arturo Vas Velasquez Jr., what will happen to Sabin? Kind of talked about that earlier. Uh, I think he's under contract with TNA, so he can't jump ship to WWE right now. Uh, Jason Lewis, why isn't the TV title defended every week? Good question. You'd have to ask uh, the creative Great question. Team. <laughs> You'd have to ask the uh, creative team, man. Couldn't give you an answer. Colm Corican, do you think Ryback will be a main event player come next Mania? Well, they're giving him the push right now. We'll see uh, how much it got over. It didn't get over it over the limit, man. The crowd was dead. <laughs> so they, they're they either going to run. If he does one wrong thing, like look at Alex Riley, yeah. plus other examples, Miz. I mean, you know, they could put the brakes on him real quick. And one last one from Arturo. Uh, Chael Sonnen versus Anderson Silva. Winner? Silva. Oh, God. Silva. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I love Chael, man. I love Chael. He's awesome, bro. But? But. And I don't like Silva one bit. Ever since Silva had that fight, dude, where he put the dude on the ground and then stand up. Then he put the dude on the ground and and stand up. Oh, dude, I can't stand him, bro, ever since that fight. I know he's a great fighter, uh, and I'm picking him. To beat I think you're talking about the day me and Maya fight where he played around. With yeah, the time man. So. Yeah. I like that fight. I uh. think it's cool when people do that. But a lot of people agree with you. More people think the way you do than, yeah. the, than what I did. But, yeah. Uh, it's it's cool. I don't, it's, I really wait, don't know, man. It's it's cool if you do it once in a while, dude. But he did it over and over and over and over again. And it's like, come on, you, man. You know. How how well do you remember the first Silver Sun fight? Not well. Not well. Sun and beat him every single. He's. Easily. Before Sonnen, not nobody won a single round against Anderson in UFC history. Like 15 fights. Nobody nobody won a round. What was against that? Sonnen, what did you, what, what a did, burp. Right. <laughs> but can I finish? So Sonnen wins round one. He, he's not just out wrestling them. He's knocking them down with punches. Four rounds straight, he's whooping them. Fifth round, he's beating his ass. Out of nowhere, on the ground, Sonnen gets lazy. There's like a minute and a half left. He's clearly on his way to winning an easy, easy decision. So uh, still puts him in a triangle. Sonnen has never lost a fight other than by submission. He's never even lost a round. Just people sometimes catch him in submissions, and he doesn't have good submission defense. I still say, I still say Anderson Silva wins that fight. I hope I'm wrong. Though. I really want Sonnen to win so bad because he'll never get another shot at Silva if he loses again. And we need Sonnen in the main event, cutting the promos the way he does. He's just awesome. Uh, Chell was on TMZ Live, dude. It was awesome last year. I tried to get you to watch it, man. I missed it. Fucking... I know, I missed it. Oh, he was awesome, bro. He was fucking crazy, dude. Crazy. All right, that's it, man. It's 10 o'clock Eastern time. We got to go. That went by quick. That's it, man. Are you on uh, vacation next week or are you coming back? I'll be gone for a while. Hopefully, uh, the neighbors here let me get hold of a computer. I can do gallery for and stuff. I got the week off. Uh, of you, you, well, the, uh, the job I can't mention, but yeah. So. There you go. Galleries, I, I still have to figure something out, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we, we will I see. Emailed, I emailed myself off the login, so I have it. Uh, yeah. At the worst, the worst, my sister has a laptop, but she doesn't have internet access. So if I walk to Burger King, supposedly there's Wi Fi, and I can figure <laughs> it out. I'll figure something out. <laughs> I'll right. figure something out. I'm not going to not work, dude. You, 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 well, I'm man.
screw it up the last Ah, uh, my man gonna do me some galleries from Burger King. <laughs> yeah, hey, buddy. Hey, man, I'm dedicated. We're gonna yeah. have a cell phone in a stranger's house right now just to make sure I did the radio this week. I have to be, I gotta yeah. work hard for my boss. He's um, a good guy and he's helping me right now a lot. Uh, I love it, dude. I love it. You are a fucking toolbox. I love every minute of it, though. Uh, yeah. I love every minute. Hey, look, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, we're out of here for Matt Boone. That's me. This is Ryan Clark. Hey, that's him. St. C next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time on WZROnline.com.